Welcome to Master the Game. I am Juice, and I am here with my lovely Dungeon Master, Bill, from Roll Stats. Uh, a couple wonderful players. My wife, Paula, playing Astrid Thaddeus. Uh, my friend, Peter, playing LBJ. Uh, and then my friend, Draven, uh, who also has a YouTube channel, uh, playing Emerald. Uh, tonight, hopefully, we can be your distraction from the United States election bullcrap. Uh, and we can just focus on some good times with friends, playing some D&D, some good laughs, and all that good stuff. So let's put all that drama aside, and if anyone wants to introduce themselves or whatever, uh, or Bill, if you just want to take it away, go for it. Yeah, uh, well, if anybody, actually, we should probably go around and everyone should uh, introduce themselves. Why don't we start with you, Juice, since it's your channel? Sure, sure. Uh, so obviously, I'm Juice. Uh, this is my channel, Master the Game. Uh, I know a lot of people have been sending you guys here, uh, both Bill Allen and Bill, uh, talking about some old school gamers coming over, so that's cool. We play all sorts of games on this channel, D&D, Pathfinder, uh, Call of Cthulhu, you name it, Rifts, uh, we play all that stuff. Uh, so anyways, if you're interested in ever checking that stuff out, hit subscribe, give us a like. Um, tonight we're playing Beck Me, and I am playing a fighter named Sloppy Sherman Woods. Uh, he is a six foot tall, 150 pound, uh, chiseled, beautiful human being with long black hair, beautiful big brown eyes, uh, loves to sport his green cloak. Um, you'll see him hanging out in the woods occasionally on a nice summer day. Uh, but yeah, that that's my guy. I'm just ready to have some fun. I don't care. <laughs> uh, so your character sounds great. I can't wait to kill him. I, I mean, meet him. So uh... <laughs> he's, he's invincible. It's, it's not they, like he has two hit points or something. Okay. So that's juice. Why don't we kick it over to your better half, uh, the better half of the stream, Paula, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, your character? Um, I am Paula. Um, tonight I will be playing um, Astrid Thaddeus. Um, she is a cleric. Um, there's nothing super striking about her. She just looks kind of like the, you know, average person living down the street, um, appearance wise. Um, but she does have short brown hair. Um, she's wearing banded mail with a, um, like a surcoat over top of it. Uh, a yellow one um, embroidered with a brown sun. Um, and, you know, she's just trying to, to do the right thing in the world right now. Well said and something I think we all need. So uh, thank you for sharing your character and I can't wait to, uh, to meet Astrid. So uh, Dave, why don't you tell us uh, about your character and about yourself and uh, we'll go from there. All right, yeah, sure. So, uh, so I'm Dave, I'm playing Emerald the Elf. Uh, so he is about five and a half feet tall. He's actually a bit built as far as an elf goes. Um, so more strength than, than dexterity or agility for him. Uh, he's wearing chainmail, uh, has a short bow and a bastard sword on him. And it was suggested that he travel the world because he has more human-like curiosity. Um, so what he considers a suggestion was probably more of like an order or an exile. <clears throat> but, um, you know, so he's uh, just sort of doing that now, and trying to see the wider world outside of the Elven realms. Nice. Uh, you want? Do you want to tell us a little bit about your channel? Oh yeah, I guess uh, just the ch YouTube channel, Dragon Swift Bow. Uh, review uh, and talk about like Starfinder, uh, Pathfinder, Two E, uh, D and D, different editions of D and D on occasions, and uh, other things like just recently got into the Alien RPG and stuff like that as well. So um, yeah, I enjoy. It's it's a great way to interact with people and talk gaming. Great. Uh, thanks for thanks for sharing uh, your elf character, and and I'm sure uh, I'm sure even though he was rejected from his own society, he's going to be well accepted in your little band of uh, of merry adventurers. So, um, and that leaves us to last but not least. My really again, DMs are not supposed to have favorites, but I'm telling you, this is the greatest character name of all time. Uh, Peter, why don't you tell us about your character and your channel? Peter. I realized that uh, the mute button I pressed. Uh. <laughs> so, 
Uh, YouTube channel B and Drake. Uh, got videos of gameplay and other things on there. Uh, be playing LBJ. He is 6'4", 250. He's big, but not muscular. He's been described as a pickpocket, slob, drunken lout, and a nincompoop. So. I love him already. So, <laughs> um, Okay. And then um, I am uh, Bill Hanks, a.k.a. Roll Stats. I have a channel, but to be honest with you, I, I don't really upload there much. Uh, that 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 I don't really upload there much more often. So I'm That's generally changing. here. You can find me. <laughs> you can find me on uh, Juice's channel most of the time. Um, otherwise, I'm probably just sort of trolling your guys' videos and watching uh, and and digging all of your stuff. So uh, that's me. So let's get to what we're all here for, right? Like, and I'm really excited to get this kicked off. I've been waiting for this game for a long time. I can't wait to run you guys through it. We are going to be playing the iconic, the eponymous B2, the Keep on the Borderlands, um, written by Gary Gygax. We are going to be playing it uh, using the Beck Me Rule system, which is what it was meant to be done. Uh, well, basic, right? But still part of the Beck Me Rule system. And this is going to be great. So... Zero hit points means you're dead, right? Like that's that's that that's what it is. All of the all of the players have rolled. Um, they rolled for everything, uh, and I am super proud of them. They're all going to get special T-shirts for that, um, because let's be honest, you know, that's the way the game was meant to be played. It was just there's there's an element of chance to the game, and so let's roll with it. Um, I'm kind of looking at you, Juice, right now with two hit points, but we're gonna. It's gonna be fine. So um, let's. I heard I get advantage go. on death saves. Uh, there are, yeah, sure, on absolutely. All of them. If if you have <laughs> if you have a death save, um, you can have advantage on it. Sure, because <laughs> death saves and advantage don't exist, but that's fine. Like it's it's great. So let's just everyone take a breath and let's get this thing started. We're gonna start this very cliche, right? So it begins. <sighs> We begin in a dimly lit chamber as a silhouetted figure enters and sits down at a small, ornately carved and lavishly decorated circular table. Lights a candle, dips the tip of a long feathered quill into a pot of ink and begins to write on a piece of fine vellum in a flowing and elegant script. By your glory, I have phenomenal news. All is going according to plan. The merchants are revolting. Three out of four caravanners brave enough to attempt the westbound journey out of the borderlands from Griffin's Rest are meeting an untimely device, demise at the hands of our raiders. No goods are getting out and inbound caravans, well, they're faring even worse. Of the last six attempts to replenish supplies, just one, the most recent has made it through and not unscathed. The fear. Oh, the glorious fear is palpable. It weighs heavily upon these fools, permeating the senses. I can feel it in the air. I can smell it on the wind. I can taste the tantalizing terror on my tongue. It's exhilarating. This keep, these stone walls that Melchior foolishly hides behind, these stone walls that he blindly protects shall be his ornately carved tomb. And as for this most recent caravan getting through, there's no need to worry. Quite frankly, this was an anomaly. To be honest, I'm surprised that they made it through at all. My shadows tell me that they fought fiercely. No ordinary farmers who buckle and cry as if children at the first sight of blood. But ultimately, it's of no consequence. They will never leave Griffin's Rest alive. I will see to this myself. The keep will fall. We will continue our march westward. And soon... All shall bend the knee, all shall hail your name, all shall taste the fear. In fact, I think I'll go down and greet this caravan as it arrives. They should be here shortly. It might be best that I see them for myself. Fade to a majestic view of the horizon from Griffin's Rest. The sun is setting just beyond the tree line, casting haunting orange and purple hues across the clouds as three overloaded wagons crest a hill just west of Griffin's Rest, accompanied by a haggard band of weary mercenaries, bruised, bloodied, and glad to be alive. A rather odd bunch they consist of. And Sherman, why don't you tell us what you're wearing and what you're doing right now as you're cresting the hill? Uh, so I am, I'm in full plate armor, uh, which you actually 
you can see it just on the the front area because my green cloak covers it as much as I can. Uh, I try to to keep it a little bit inconspicuous. Um, I have a short sword on my hip, and I always have my bow in my hand, my short bow. Uh, it's always got an arrow that I'm I'm holding with it. Uh, it's not uh, laced up on the string. It's just in the same hand that's holding the bow at all times, ready. And uh, I'm I'm perched up uh, on the the side of the caravan, uh, keeping an eye out on our our uh, flank on the uh, side that seems like it's got the most cover and where we could be ambushed uh, in, a, in from anybody that would be a straggling bandit or a monster or something. Um, my black hair kind of is covering half of my face. Um, it, it gives me this feeling of of being hidden, even though I'm not. <laughs> uh, it's this self comfort thing uh, that I, I tend to do. Um, and I would probably be trying every now and then to uh, get to know my companions who are with me. Um, and being that I haven't been around them a long time, uh, I'd probably be looking for anyone else who might be able to, uh, be a good scout as well. Uh, and Astrid, why don't you describe yourself and what you're doing as you're cresting the hill on your way to the keep? Um, so as we're going, um, over this hill on the way to the keep, Astrid is kind of walking behind the, the wagon off to one side. Um, she's, she's not real tall. She's not real short. Um, and, and she's got this chappy short brown hair. Um, she's wearing, I mean, some heavier armor. Um, and she has this this yellow sir cloak over it, um, emblazoned with uh, a sun. Um, and and as she's just kind of walking behind the wagon, um, she's kind of casually just swinging this this hammer that she has at her side as she kind of kicks the rocks, um, and you know looks out. Um, to the road next to her, just kind of, kind of keeping an eye on things, um, but, but pretty casual and, and feeling rather optimistic about, you know, everything going on right now. It feels Great. like it's going to be a good day. <laughs> we all need it. Um, Emerald, <laughs> why don't you tell us, uh, why don't you describe uh, yourself and what you're doing as you're, appro uh, as you're approaching the keep with this with this mix-matched uh, group. Okay, so I'd be walking sort of alongside probably the leading wagon. Uh, and I've got my short bow, I've got my short bow out, but I just sort of have it like across my shoulders and um, just kind of casually walking. Uh, during the trip, I've probably been annoying Sherman's character with um, <laughs> questions about how like humans trained in archery and you know, <laughs> criticizing or critiquing his technique and uh, all those things, but uh, just right now, I'm just sort of just going along with the uh, the caravan, kind of just taking in the the scenery. Sure. Uh, and finally, uh, LBJ, what what? Why don't you explain? Uh, why don't you explain what you're doing and 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 uh, uh, on your approach? Um. So as the caravan crests over the hill, and one of the wheels hits a rock, and jars the. Uh, the vehicle, LBJ sticks his head up because walking's for suckers. <laughs> and he kind of looks out groggy as he's been sleeping, uh, just checking out everything. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so uh, you all signed on as sellswords with uh, Merchant Caravan to Griffin's Rest for your own reasons. Uh, for some of you, this was the only paying job you could get. For others, the promise of the unexplored uh, wilderlands and untold riches were simply too much to resist. And for some, well, 
Some of you had other reasons, hidden, secret reasons. But regardless, you all set out from the far western reaches nigh on four to five moons ago. And it's hard to believe it's been that long. And yet the farmers had just recently finished sowing the soil when you embarked on your journey. And harvest has long since passed. And the first nip of frost is already in the air, so it must be so. It is. It has indeed been a long and arduous journey. And... and since entering the wilder area of the borderlands, the farms and towns have become less frequent and travelers few. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for bandits and brigands. Uh, you've been attacked no less than three times in the past fortnight, suffering heavy, heavy losses. When you set out from the Westerlands, you were five wagons strong with a full crew of 16, including five teamsters, 10 guards, and a trail boss. You've reached your destination significantly lighter, with only three wagons remaining, four Teamsters, one of which, Dodd Allerston, was quickly promoted to trail boss after Old Winthrop fell under the blade of a brigand, and you, four, as the remaining guards. Even from the road, Griffin's Rest is an impressive sight. It's a mighty castle perched on a flat-topped hill, with a path climbing steeply up beneath frowning guard towers until it reaches the main gate. Crenellated battlements line the walls, offering plenty of cover for archers to attack any foe coming up the exposed path. And as you draw near, you hear a clanging uh, as if a great gong uh, is, is ringing from one of the towers that overlooks the path. Uh, clearly, your approach has been noticed. You, and you continue on your way, your back itching as you try not to think about deadly arrows suddenly being launched in your direction. Following the curve of the path around the side, you come to the Great Gate, a drawbridge flanked by 30-foot high watchtowers on either side. And as you approach, the guard on one of the towers hails you. Oi, you there, declare your names and state your biz, uh, I mean, state your names and declare your business. Uh, and then you hear another voice from the other tower. Idiot! They're clearly the caravan we've been expecting. Lower the damn bridge! And then you hear, I lowering the bridge. Uh, and then the second voice yells out, mind you, don't get too close to the edge. She comes down pretty hard. Uh, and you can see at essentially the moat that surrounds the keep. Um, you can see where the, the bridge would come down. And he's right. It comes out about a foot, um, you know, over onto that side. And as the you can hear the chains start to come down, um, and slowly they're sort of like clinking down. And it get, as it gets down to about two feet before it hits the ground, it slams down um, really hard and dust blows up uh, in your face. Reminds me of my third wife. Mean old bitch that one was. And then he yells out, raise the gate. Um, the porticolis sort of slowly rises, creaking, clearing the way for you to step off the drawbridge and between the towers. Um, and about 10 feet ahead of you is sort of the final barrier barring your entry. It's a set of sturdy double doors made of thick wood, looks like to be reinforced with iron bands all the way around. And the shutter at the back of a barred window sort of so like you know you pull it back if you think of like speakeasy style he pulled uh the shutter gets pulled back and you can see a man's face kind of scrutinizing you with with calm deliberation and he he yells out welcome to the keep i apologize for the moron we've taken a few losses on the wall and i've had to recruit some of the local farmers to walk it useless twats they be and then he spits and wipes the back of his wipes the mouth his mouth with the back of his hand like trying to wipe the taste of the word farmer out of his mouth and he kind of looks you guys up up and down slowly his eyes sort of coming to rest on your on your weapons and he says i'm cornelius the gatekeeper if you are who you appear to be you are well met indeed but this is a peaceable place sheathe your steel and keep it sheathed within these walls Behave yourselves and you'll find to keep a home away from home. Stir up trouble and you'll wish you'd never come here. I guarantee it. So what do you guys do? Upon him saying that, I will uh, actually put my arrow away and I'll actually put my bow on my back as well. And then okay. I'll, I'll, I'll turn to Emerald and I'll be like, we'll settle our little uh, disagreement about how to shoot a bow later. Uh, I'd love to do some target practice with you. It's not often I get to be around knife ears. <laughs> so LBJ, how was your nap? <laughs> mm, wasn't long enough. 
Emerald, keep an eye on him. He seems always do. And uh, so I sort of take notes of people's like personalities and stuff. Um, I probably let the the knife ears thing completely like just fly over my head (laughs) because I'm kind of oblivious to stuff like that. Um, but I'll put my bow away and uh, I'll tell him that I'll be more than happy to give Sherman a few pointers on how to how to shoot a bow properly. So as you all begin to uh, sheathe your weapons and and uh, put your bows away, the, the double doors um, begin to open. You hear clanking on the other side as if multiple locks up and down the door. Um, and so you hear clank, clank, clank. The doors open and, uh, who you know, Cornelius is standing there and he kind of ushers you into the entry yard. Um, you know, and as he's sort of, you know, waiting for the wagons to come in, um, he he yells out at you guys. You see that? You see that bloke over there with the wonky eye and the bad attitude? He's the corporal of the watch. And believe me when I tell you, he just as soon gut you as look at you. But he's the man you got to see. So mind your manners and you'll be just fine. And if you be needing anything, you come back and see old Cornelius. You got stones, I'll give you that. And you proved your skill with steel, that's for sure. I like that. And besides, we owes you. So I'm, I'm assuming you guys are going to enter into the courtyard? What does the uh, courtyard look like? Is there a lot of people moving around, taking the stuff off the caravan? Yeah, so so the, the, the entry, so like you sort of, you come into the entry yard. The entry yard is a narrow entry yard. It's like, it's approximately 25, 20 feet wide running east to west and runs approximately 50 feet to the north to this massive inner stone wall that that you assume would go to the inner bailey and then 50 feet south to where the corporal of the watch uh is standing the gentleman that cornelius pointed out who's a massive man six and a half feet tall um at least uh really bulky built uh man with just a bulldog looking face with this nasty scar that runs from the top of his forehead all the way to his chin right through his eye um he's standing there there's a robed man standing next to him in what appear to be two men at arms and as soon as you come through into the entry yard you're faced with there are sort of two low slung buildings again approximately 20 feet in front of you that are connected one you're assuming based on the smell and the look of it to be the stables you can i mean the smell of of manure just hits you in the face as soon as you enter and some lackeys run from there and they go to grab the mules and the horses and they're basically taking care of the wagon um and cornelius is is sort of you know he's pointing over to the corporal of the watch and ushering you over there so yeah i would start walking that way um i would assume that you know uh the group would be coming along with me but if anybody's not i'll kind of stop and wait for them yeah so uh so dodd who was essentially you guys had elected um to be the new to be the new to be the new trail boss right uh he is he's heading over that way um he's been pretty silent for most of the trip out here he's been kind of silent uh since the last bandit attack he seems pretty traumatized right like he looks like he just wants to get paid and he wants to get uh and he wants to get out of here so he's definitely heading over that way um as for the rest of the party i I don't know what are you guys doing so I was actually kind of just, you know, looking around, checking things out. Um, and as I see um, Slappy over there head off um, to, to wherever the, the corporal is, um, I kind of actually have to run a little bit to um, catch up to him. Um, but I kind of follow along um, with him. Okay. Um, what about you, LBJ? What are you doing? I'm going to scan the courtyard and I'm watching the caravan because I know some guards died yep. and they had weapons and they probably stashed them on the caravan. And I'm going to see if they need a hand getting some of the weapons off there because, yep. you know, I could help. <laughs> yep. Understood. And because so you're so helpful like that. 
There, uh, so there are, um, essentially, you are the only guards that are left, right? The four of you are the guards. Uh, but the lackeys that ran out from the stable are, it's basically their job. They're unpacking the wagon. They're tending to the horses. They're tending to the pack mules. So uh, yeah. you're more than happy to give them a hand if you'd like. Yes, I'm specifically looking for a sword. That would okay. be nice. <laughs> uh, are you looking for a specific sword or are you um, looking for any sword any sword something bigger than a dagger got it got it got it <clears throat> I'm not very discriminating so you so there is a variety of weapons that are left over um, from the guards that had essentially the guards that had fallen. Uh, there are two, several nice looking long swords um, that look almost, they are not standard issue, meaning um, they're not something that you would nor that, that are given out um, by a provisioner at the beginning of the caravan trail. They look to be personal long swords. Um, quite, quite nice. Um, quite nice in terms of ornately carved hilt and or bejeweled hilt. Um, then you have a couple short swords uh, that look to be just standard issue. Uh, in other words, that a provisioner would give you, um, you know, when you sign on for caravan duty. And there are uh, several short bows available as well. Hmm. Also, um, you know, they are all in plain sight, I guess is what I'm saying. So... <clears throat> Yeah, so I walk up to these uh, swords, and uh, the real fancy one looks looks to my liking. I think it's talking to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you want to? So how how did you want to play this? Are you going to Are you going to grab the sword? Are you going to try to 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 uh, sneakily grab the sword, or are you just going to uh, walk up and grab it? I'm just going to walk up and grab it, like it yeah, belongs yeah. to me. Yep. Okay, so um, the lackeys are are busy. Uh, they're they're running back and forth, um, and and really their focus is primarily on the sacks, bay, the uh, casks, crates, barrels. You know, really, there's a lot of food stuff in these uh, wagons, and and that was what your priority was. Um, there were certainly uh, there was certainly uh, several wagons that were from traders. You know, you, again, you started out with five. You lost two wagons. The two wagons that you lost um, were really trade goods, um, not foodstuffs. The, the wagons that Dodd uh, was focused on pr on protecting mostly was the foodstuffs. Um, you get the feeling that the folks here at Griffin's Rest uh, are really relying on this. And you, you get the feeling passing farms along the way, right? The farms outside of the keep, they don't look to be producing uh, much at all. In fact, it looks like most of them were abandoned. So um, the, 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 the lackeys are really focused on the foodstuffs. And you honestly, you, you grab the sword and nobody looks twice. Okay. Um, and as you approach the corporal of the watch, he, again, he's standing there. Uh, there's a gentleman next to him in uh, long flowing robes. Um, real strong contrast between the corporal of the watch, who is this big brutish um, guy. And then there's the sort of this skinny, uh, this skinny, short robed individual who is standing next to him. Um, both of them are, both of them are looking at you quite, uh, both of them are looking at you quite anxiously. Uh, and as you, and as you approach, uh, the corporal of the rock, the corporal of the watch shouts out, um, the corporal of the watch shouts out, we're so glad to see you. We're so glad to see you. Um, step forward quickly, step forward. Okay. Step forward. Uh, and as you step forward, he says, uh, so uh, the lackeys are going to take care. The lackeys are certainly going to take care of, uh, of, of everything on the, the wagon itself. Who be the trail boss? And Dodd speaks up uh, and he says, uh, okay. And he asks him uh, your name and occupation. Dodd gives him his name and occupation. And uh, the, the, the gentleman in the robes next to him, who is, you assume to be the scribe, sort of writes down the name and uh, and his occupation. And Dodd asks for the guild master, and 
he gives him directions and Dodd looks at you all and says, I'm going to go try to get us paid and, you know, runs off. I'll meet you at the end. Good. Uh, yes. Oh, sure. uh, and don't be too long. I mean, we run these tabs up pretty quick, <laughs> especially Astrid. She can't handle it. And, uh, and so the, the corporal of the watch, uh, as, as you say, this looks up and says, first round is on me. Name's Wilford Reaver. Uh, name's Wilford Reaver. Drop it, drop it at the end, drop it at the bloody anvil. And, and the first round is on me. Uh, and so then he says, so step forwards, step forward, uh, to, to, to you, Sherman. Uh, Wil what's your name? Wilfred? You said the, the bloody anvil? Wilfred, Wilfred Reaver, the bloody anvil, the bloody anvil is the tavern in the, uh, is the tavern in Griffith's Rest. It's really, it's really the gilded anvil, but you know, the, the, the tavern part of the inn we call the bloody anvil. It's a long story. I'll tell it to you over a couple drinks. Sounds interesting. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you want to buy any more drinks for LBJ. He's just going to sleep it off anyway. If you want to send his my way, I will happily take those. And Emerald <laughs> over here, he could definitely use some. So I got everybody's I'm name. Thirsty. So I got I got LBJ, I got Emerald, and I got Astrid. What's your name? Oh, just call me uh, Mr. Woods. So... I'd love to call you Mr. Woods, but I'm but 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 my friend here needs your actual name. Oh, Sherman Woods. Yeah. So uh, the scribe uh, the scribe marks it down, um, and he asks uh, Astrid for her surname. Um, Thaddeus. Astrid Thaddeus, duly noted, uh, and the scribe is sort of like writing all of this down, um, and then. As the scribe is is writing it down, Wilfred looks up and he says, "Really, how 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 bad was it?" I turn to Emerald and be like, "You want to take this one?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll just tell him, you know, we're all that's left. Um, we did lose a couple of uh, wagons along the way, but um, those that that remain did a good job fighting them off, at least for the most part. Are you are you wearing a hood right now, Dave? No, oh, no, I'm sorry, no, Emerald. No, 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 I I don't have a hood. Okay, so, so my hair is all like 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 it's been blown by the wind for three months straight, and it's got leaves and snow, and they're like just wet, matted down. Um, I also, because of my curiosity, I try to see what the scribe is writing down um, after yep. I give him my name. I just yep. like try to kind of peek and see if he's running anything else about me. So he's writing, um, he is writing down everyone's name and their occupation and the caravan that they were with. And next to you, he writes elf question mark. Um, and as you, you're sort of leaning over and looking, Wilfred kind of leans in and leans down a little bit because he's, you know, a six foot four, six foot five. Um, and so he's towering over you by about a foot and a half. Uh, and so he he sort of leans down to look at you and he says, I don't know. And I don't care what sort of pixie fairy bullshit you've been doing out there in them woods. But if I was you, I I'd get a cloak real quick. Folks around here. Don't take kindly to casters. Oh, I just tell him noted. And then I just grab my hair and I just sort of like, tuck it or like put it over my ears and it, it kind of stays in place. Yep. Got it. Got it. Do we hear him say this? You do. Yeah. He's quite, he's quite uh, open and loud about it. Yeah. Right. So Careful Sherman what you would... say about my friend when I. <laughs> <laughs> so do you say this to the corporal of the law? Oh yeah. Okay. I'll just, I'll just um, say, no, it's, it's okay. Look, we're, we're guests here. So. You know, it's, their, it's their customs. I, it's what I came to learn about, and apparently I'm learning a lot about these people. So there you go. He, so Wilfred looks up, and uh, like so he sort of was bending over to talk to Emerald. When you say this, he looks up and shoots you, uh, and and shoots you uh, essentially what amounts to a death glare. And he said, and he says, maybe you didn't hear me. I said I don't know, and I don't care. 
I'm simply offering the man a friendly warning. Folks around here don't take kindly to casters. Now, do you want to rethink what you said, or do we want to take this out into the yard? You got too many words. I, ain't, I might be stupid, but I ain't deaf. I heard you. <laughs> so Sherman's just um, watching this in the back with his arms crossed, belly yeah. laughing at this exchange. Yeah. Like, like he expected this with uh, Emerald coming into town. He knew this was coming, and he knew yeah. LBJ wouldn't take too kindly to it either. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, um, so with that, uh, so with that, with this last exchange, right? Um, the Wilfred leans back, put crosses his hands over his chest, and 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 says, "We owe you." I don't. I don't doubt that. I, I certainly don't doubt that we owe you. I was trying to do the man a favor. If you want to traipse into town with a caster and see how it goes for you, you go right ahead. I'd love to watch. In fact, I'll be at the bloody anvil shortly to see how this goes. And he spits. <laughs> and sort of shrugs his shoulders and nods his head for you to walk past. All right, so I'll just say, we'll see you there. And I try to spit as well, but I'm, <laughs> I'm really dehydrated, so nothing comes out. And I just <laughs> turn on my heel and make my way towards the bloody anvil. And again, just sort of pack my hair down over my ears. Gotcha. So you you all turn the corner. Um, uh, you all turn the corner. And as you turn the corner, Wilfred and uh, the scribe sort of just kind of huddle together. And you, you can see that they're discussing... Um, different situations uh they're they're discussing your arrival but they're also discussing you can kind of catch uh you can catch a little bit of the conversation they're talking about sort of the guarding and dispersal of the food right um so they're they're sort of like stuck in their business as you turn the corner you can see along the southern wall so along the southern wall of the the big thick outer southern wall there's a row of what appear to be um apartments for lack of a better word so they're 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 quite small like 10 by 20 all connected almost like if you think about uh an old road motel um it's sort of set up uh in in that manner to the north as you come in this 20 foot sort of uh this this 20 foot pathway it's a 20 foot wide cobblestone pathway um to the north of that is uh 20 foot high and it has sort of crenellations on the building itself but it's open in the front and you can see this appears to be some sort of blacksmith uh, or armorer um you can hear the clang of the hammer and you can kind of smell the 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 burning iron uh as you walk by and it, it opens up into a larger sort of courtyard area that's 30 feet now by about 50 feet long um and there you don't really see uh you don't see many folks out and about like i guess what i'm saying is you would expect from this clanging gong that you would see uh people milling around this appears to be uh this th this appears to be um empty for 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 all intents and purposes even though by time of day, you guess it, you know, right around six to seven o'clock, you would you would definitely expect to see more people. Moreover, you don't really know, uh, you know, where you're going. Again, you have these buildings along the south. You have this uh, blacksmith and or armor up to the north. Uh, and then there are uh, there are two other sort of low slung buildings to uh, directly to the uh, west of that. So. See, I really wish I could show a map. You're kind of entering this courtyard with two buildings to the northwest, a building directly to the north of you, and then um, these smaller sort of like uh, apartment type buildings um, to the south of you. Well, I, I wonder where everybody is. I mean, wouldn't you guys expect to see more people kind of out and about? Where's this inn? I thought we were looking for an, uh, an inn or the bloody anvil, right? Well, that's why we brought you, Astrid. You're the one that's going to find it for us, right? <laughs> what? You sniffed that liquor out like nothing. 
what are you talking about? Well, I you think you have me. I think you have me confused with LBJ over there. Oh, maybe. I don't know. It was one of you guys. Like he's the one who was like sleeping it off all day today. Come I didn't on. know are we related. <laughs> <laughs> are you related? <laughs> I mean, you um, look similar. So as you guys, as you guys are in this uh, area, you're sort of standing uh, in the middle of this little uh, of this courtyard area. You hear, um, you hear uh, a yell from behind you, "Oi!" And you turn. I, I'm assuming. Yeah. What's yeah. going on? You turn, and Cornelius comes running up from behind you, and. Uh, and he's like, I told you it was a pleasant one, didn't I? Uh, here, come on. I'll, I'm going to show you. I'll, I'll show you where the inn is. I'll show you where the inn is. And he, uh, and he um, starts walking west, uh, you know, towards the end of the courtyard. Yeah, I'll, I'll be right there with him then the whole time. Okay. Smash so stride for stride. anything out in this courtyard? Cups, so no, uh, no that. Again, the no the the courtyard is the courtyard is oddly uh, the courtyard is oddly empty. Again, you, it it looks lived in, so you can see um, you definitely see evidence that people are here. It's just um, it's just empty right now. And as you're walking along, Cornelius is kind of blabbing on about uh, about what a you know huge cock reaver is and um you take us like so he takes you through a very small opening um at the very west end of uh this courtyard that you're in which you could barely um which you can barely see it's about five feet wide in between two buildings almost like a little alleyway uh it, it's 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 uh it's very cramped five feet wide looks to be about 10 or 15 feet long he walks through um, you know, no issue at all. And he turns around and he says, come on, come on. I, I would probably slide. So Astrid is a little hesitant because, I mean, it seems like we're going nowhere, but she just shrugs her shoulders. Like she, she was kind of expecting like there's a lot of lights on, right? We have no idea where we're going. It's like we're going to this secret hideout or something. I don't know. She just kind of shrugs her shoulders, though, and, and continues on. So you come out the other side and you see a, quite a large courtyard. Um, and it runs uh, along the western uh, along the western wall, so the large western wall. Uh, there's a big fountain in the center of it, and you see easily a hundred people um, in this courtyard and they're all, they're all sort of milling about. They look, uh, they look quite worried and anxious uh, and you can hear sort of, um, sort of snatches of conversation. What do you think it is this time? Oh God, I hate when the gong goes off. Like, uh, and, and your feeling is that um, folks gather here when they hear the gong. Uh, this is, this is right along the western wall where the and the western wall is at the highest point um so there's no chance of breaching that wall your your feeling is that that uh this is where they hide when the gong gets rung and um and, and it seems like they've been doing it quite often lately right they they uh they see, they appear to be pretty anxious about it and again it's close to 100 people milling about in this courtyard that's like 50 feet north to south and probably twice that, uh, or I'm sorry, 50 feet east to west and probably twice that north to south. Um, at the very north, you can see um, uh, a big two-story sort of frame building um, with signage out front that that says uh, Gilded Anvil. And then there's a building that runs um, it's about the same size, but runs in an L formation. So like, uh, you know, an L to the side of it, uh, that's about the same size and looks to be connected to that, that building as well. And then again, there's this fountain, um, really nice big fountain about 20 feet across that, uh, that, that sits dead center. And, uh, Cornelius starts walking towards the, the gilded anvil. Hey, look guys, it's our welcome party. They're <laughs> ushering us to this gilded anvil. <laughs> um, so I'm going to kind of tap Cornelius and say, what, what's up with the 
what's up with the gong? Everybody so, seems freaked out or something. What's going he, on? So, uh, so it's it's been rough lately. It's been a, a rough time, and you can see this guy who's generally he he has been gruff and very um, sort of bold and boisterous. You can almost see him kind of melt. Um, uh, it, it it's it's been it, it's it's been rough here at Griffin's Rest. Uh, the, the the gong goes off almost daily, and it's usually not good news. Uh, usually, the gong means raiding hordes. Uh, the, these folks are these folks are 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 in fear of their lives. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. You're the first yeah. caravan. You're the first caravan out of the last six that actually made it through, and and even you only have half supplies. And then, not no offense, I, I we appreciate everything that you brought, but I, it, it's not it, it it it's not it's it's not an easy life here lately. How long has this been going on? Months. What's our gracious guard captain doing about it? There's, there's, there's no one, there's no one left. I can't, you can't blame, you, you can't blame Reaver for, for, for this. I, I, I know he's an ornery cuss, but you, you, you can't blame him for this. He, he does, he does all that he can. There's just, just so many. The numbers are just overwhelming. I, I you saw yourself. I. They just keep coming and 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 coming and and coming and we and, and and there's there's nobody left to send out. We're we're already pulling in. Like I told you, we're pulling in useless farmers to to walk the wall because we just don't we we don't have the, the manpower anymore. And if we send them out, then who's left behind to guard the keep? But we're starving, and 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 nobody knows what to do. Sounds like you got to wow. man up. I mean, better than waiting in here and dying like a coward. Guys, we got to help them. This is bad. This is really bad. Yeah, we do got to help them. We got to teach them how to help themselves. So uh, Cornelius, Cornelius looks at you and he says, begging your pardon and no offense, but I, I, I've been carrying a sword before you were born. I, I don't. I don't need you to teach me how to use steel, son. I. I. I just. I. I. I need more man. You Look, just said you what? have them, but you don't want to send the farmers out. Sounds like you have to train them. What? Can if we, I no, 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 if no. I send the Look, farmers don't out, listen to him. You have to protect the keep. What good are they doing in here as farmers? They need to be out in the fields farming them. They're 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 fending off the horde and raids that are trying to that are trying to breach the walls on a daily basis. Again, oh, no I offense, misunderstood son. you. Again, no no offense, son, but I don't I don't need you to tell me how to use steel. <laughs> Look, I feel like I mean, I don't know about everybody else, but I feel like I could do something to help you out. Like you guys really just need some help right now. Let's, right, like what? What could I do? What could I do to help? Let's 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 go. Let's let's go to the Gilded Anvil. Let's get you a drink. Let's get you some food. Let's get you some food. Let's get you fed. And we don't want to have this discussion in front of these fine folk right here. They're they're already scared enough. So you said there's a fountain out here. There is. There's a massive fountain. It's about 20 feet in diameter in the center of the courtyard. Okay, yeah. I'll walk over to it and I'm going to take a drink out of it. <laughs> okay. So you I just knew you were going to like drink it or like I get money out of it. Like, yeah, he's I the really red thought button pusher. He's like red button push. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I really yeah. thought he was going to fit in it. So all right. So okay, you walk up to the fountain and you take a drink of it and um. You know, the, so the people 
that are all sort of milling about. They look at you and a, a couple of, you know, a couple ladies that are nearby kind of like sigh, like, oh. um, but, but nobody says anything to you. Um, you can certainly, uh, you can, you can continue to drink from the fountain. So. Yeah. Is there anything in there? Did it, has anybody happened to throw in a coin or two? No, there are no coins. Uh, there are no coins in the fountain currently. You don't know if that means, and you can see that it looks like co coins may have been there, but somebody has become so desperate that they've actually, uh, you know, taken the coins from Beat the bottom. Beat me to it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> um, and so Cornelius looks at you, Astrid, with sort of pleading eyes, like, let's just go, let's, let's, Let's get a table, let's get you a drink, and let's get you fed. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Uh, and so then he turns and starts heading towards uh, the Gilded Anvil. So, I What are the rest of you follow him. I'm ready for that drink, so I'm, I'm following. Okay. okay. Always so, interested in human cuisine. <laughs> so um so you enter so you enter into the gilded anvil the inside of the gilded anvil although it's certainly not um it's not what you would call uh it's certainly not what you would call posh or or fancy but it is clean um so the the, the inside the walls are freshly whitewashed uh so it's a sort of a timber building um but it it has like a whitewash type plastic uh, or plaster on the the inside and behind uh there's like this large oak and so as you enter there's a large oak counter that runs essentially the length of the building from east to west uh and behind it um a, sort of a a plump woman um maybe in her mid to late 40s with pale skin um green eyes and medium length uh straight like auburnish uh kind of hair um looks up and she says well hello hello will, uh, will you be needing rooms and cornelius says uh cornelius says yes th uh, this this is the th this is the the latest caravan um uh, they, they'll they'll be needing rooms for tonight uh and and it's 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 on reaver it's on reaver and uh, so she kind of takes the, the the towel off of her shoulder and wipes her hands and says, "Well then, well then, welcome, welcome to the Gilded Anvil." Uh, and she uh, says, "Okay, you know, no charge, and your rooms will be ready in in about an hour." She just has to go and change the bedding for you. In the meantime, though, you should head next door over to the Bloody Anvil and have yourself a drink and maybe get some stew. Ooh, stew sounds good. Is that also on Reaver? Can we just uh, run up a huge tab because he's kind of a jerk? <laughs> Are you asking that out loud or I'll ask I'll ask the first part out loud. And I'll say yeah. the second part under my breath. So um so uh Cornelius answers and he says, yeah, uh, customary, the customary that caravan that makes it through uh, gets first first round room and board and uh, is on Reaver. So, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go. So there's a connected door. In other words, the two buildings are kind of connected in this L shape. And as you come through uh, the door that's on the west wall, you enter a room which is essentially the same, uh, sort of oak and timber walls with this whitewashed plaster. Um, and same sort of layout with a counter, a bar that runs uh that runs along the the length of the building except this is north to south as opposed to um as opposed to uh east and west the tavern itself is uh it's it's fairly um busy uh as you as you walk in you see uh sort of a, a thin looking kind of uh 
pasty kid, I don't know, 15 or 16 years old. Um, he is uh, he is trying to break up what appears to be a fight uh, at the bar <laughs> um, and, and not doing a really good job of it. But behind the bar, um, the bar, it, it, who you would assume to be with the bartender, the barman, um, is, is a bigger fellow. Uh, about looks to be about 50 uh, light brown hair mixed kind of mixed with gray cropped kind of short um, and he's missing a couple fingers on his uh, on his left hand is screaming um, is you know screaming at the 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 at the pop boy, the, the little 15 year old kid on the other side, Bertram, get between them, get between them uh, as they are, you know, about to go at it. And then um, finally a, a woman looks to be maybe in her, looks to be maybe in her mid forties or so um, curly dark hair that's twisted into like long braids. She runs out and gets in front, um, you know, jumps in between these two guys that are getting into this bar fight, uh, you know, and says, don't, don't make me get involved. You wouldn't hit a woman now, would you? And uh, as you guys come through the door, the fight actually stops and all eyes sort of turn and are on you now. <laughs> I'll just check that my hair is still covering my ears. Okay. I'll just uh, I'll just stand behind uh, Emero at this point. Uh, if he wants to break it up, cool. But I'm not getting involved. <laughs> okay. Well, see how this, uh, I this just turns kind out. of <laughs> Astrid just kind of uh, as everybody looks at us, just you know, shrugs her shoulders. Um, it continues to walk forward, kind of looking behind um, at her companions who have just sort of halted and are standing there. And it, she just walks down to an open table and sits down as though nobody's even staring at us. Perfect. Uh, Cornelius actually, um, Cornelius follows you. And as he walks, so he walks along the bar. So you're walking um, south along the bar to this larger table he walks past the two guys and um bertram and he kind of shoots the the two uh gentlemen that were getting into a, a fight at the bar he shoots them a look and immediately they sit down and just start you know nursing their ales they they it, he he has immediately shut the situation down and goes and uh sits next to you so I'll just walk up to one of them. I don't care which one it is. And I'll just say, you know, for the record, I thought you could have taken them. And then I'll sneak <laughs> away to the bar. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Bertram, as you do that, Bertram looks at you and he's like, really, really? Why? Why do you have to push it? And, uh, and he immediately goes to start, uh, you know, cleaning uh cleaning tables like sort of bussing the tables getting the, the stuff off and um and the uh and the man who's behind the bar yells over to to cornelius and he says usual and cornelius says yeah buck and um you know he starts pouring out uh he starts pouring out some honey mead so who's bussing the tables cornelius no uh Bertram, the little skinny 15 okay. to 16 year old kid that was trying to break up the fight between. Okay. The, yeah, right, right. So I'm going to walk over to where he's busting the tables. Is there any, I'm assuming it's tankards and oh, you plates? Bad. You're going to steal tips. <laughs> um, yeah, there's tankards and plates. It looks like. Is there like anything left? Yes, there is, because here's what happened. <laughs> um, well, or what you're assuming happened. When the gong clanged right um right. most of the folks have to go they they're supposed to go gather in the courtyard you know these are sort of the hardcore drinkers that are left and decided ah screw it uh, if i'm gonna die i'm just gonna die drunk um so yeah there's there's a bunch of empty tables uh well tables with no people at them but that have you know half drunken drinks and half eaten food and 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 yeah all sorts of stuff all over yeah yeah i just pick up one plate and i look at him and yeah, I just put it on here. <laughs> he, he he looks at you and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, you know what? I don't even care anymore. And he just starts like scraping food onto the plate that you picked up. And he's Pull like, enough. Like, 
<laughs> LBJ, that's how you spread these illnesses around these towns, man. Use a clean plate. What the heck, man? That's gross. Uh, I'll like clean it when it's done. <laughs> All I can picture is us sitting at an empty table and LBJ walking over, putting down a full plate of food with <laughs> but like, a but big like, mug of beer. Uh, it's eaten like food. eating away exactly. at it. It's, it's like nothing like, had happened. It's like it's like a sandwich with a bite taken out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that bread's stale. <laughs> I mean, it's so, probably better than these rations we've been eating for the last few nights, man. Oh, my rations are great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, so, as, so as, LBJ, as LBJ is collecting food and, uh, and Astrid is sort of looking on in shock and horror, um, watching him eat other people's food, and Cornelius is just kind of trying to ignore that the whole situation is happening at all, um, the 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 woman the older woman uh that you know with the dark hair that's kind of braided and twisted back she uh she runs over and wipes her hands on her uh on her apron and um she she says what 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 can i get for you what can i get for you honey something fresher than what he has <laughs> and she looks over at lvj and sees the plate of half eaten food and she's like oh so Sweetie, I I can bring you fresh food. <laughs> you, you don't you don't you don't need to eat that. Just charge him for that. He he's fine. <laughs> By I'll the way, I hear too. you have great stew. Yeah, yeah, I heard something about this stew. Best 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 stew this side of the wilderlands. Yes, absolutely best stew this side of the. Wilderlands. Let me let me go get you. Let me go get you some bowls of that. Uh, Cornelius, your honey meat is on the way. What can I get for drinks um, for the rest of you? I want a honey made. So, so the first round that's on that's on the um, Reaver, right? Actually, and Cornelius, C Cornelius looks up and says, "Yeah, Kay, you know you know the score. First round is on Reaver. First round is on Reaver. So make it the good stuff." And she says, "Gotcha, gotcha." Okay, so and for the for, for the first round, I want a barrel of your mead. <laughs> 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 well, a honey, I love you know. <laughs> Honey, I'd love to give you a barrel, but that's pushing it just a bit. I don't think that Reaver is going to, I don't think that he's going to spring for a barrel. But I know you're just joking. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, I'll have uh, I'll have just a, a tankard. So uh, she runs back. Um, she runs back to go off and get your stew and, and your food. Uh, is everyone seated at the table at this point? Or are you, LBJ, are you still sort of skulking around looking for things to pilfer? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still looking for food. I, and I hold up my tankard and just say, you fill this up when you get a chance. <laughs> and, uh, and the, um, Bertram, the, the, the pop boy, basically, um, he, he runs up and grabs it and says, I'll, I'll get this for you. And you see, he goes over to a table on the other side of the room and takes a, like, an ale half drunken and he pours it into your glass and then he takes a beer half drunken and he pours it into your glass and he brings it back to you and says, here you go. I'm going to like you. <laughs> That's what we call the LBJ special. <clears throat> um, so Cornelius sort of is waiting for everyone to settle down. Um, you know, and as you do, he's, he's, Sitting there, he's kind of contemplating um, what to say and how to say it. You you get the feeling that he uh, he doesn't he wants to trust you, but he doesn't know necessarily how much he can. Um, you get the feeling that he's torn as to as to you know what he should share. Um, but after what seems like a pretty long pause, he 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 looks up at you um, and he says you were the first caravan to make it through the lines in, in two months, uh, literally out of the last six, you're the only one that's made it. I don't, I don't know how you made it through and, and you know how bad it is worse than any of us, 
I don't, I don't know whether to ask you for advice or to ask you for help. Well, how much coin you got? Well, consulting fees can be expensive, but helping and actually getting in the trenches, that's a little more expensive. I don't have much coin, uh, but it's not my place to pay you. Um, the Castellan, he's got plenty of coin. Well, well, I mean, what, what all is really raiding you guys in this area? Like, what's the cause of the problem? You know, it, it sounds like this is sort of a new problem. This is kind of a new thing that's come up in the last five months. I mean, what changed? So he looks down at the table for what seems like a long time. Um, Kay comes, well, the barmaid comes and puts the, the honey meat down, puts you all of your drinks down. He kind of mumbles under his breath, thanks, Kay, as she walks away. He takes a long, strong drink from his uh, from his mead, and he looks up at you and he says, I don't expect you to believe what I'm about to tell you. And to be honest, if I were you, I wouldn't believe me either. But by St. Cuthbert, it's true. These aren't, these aren't just men that we're talking about. These aren't just bandits. These are, these are beasts, foul, evil beasts I, and i'm not talking about child stories i'm not talking about the boogeyman i these are organized beasts with gnashing teeth and claws and uh, you, Things that you couldn't imagine even in your worst nightmares. And I know how this sounds, and I don't expect you to believe me, but I, I never seen anything like this. And with that, he looks back down into his mead and waits for the onslaught of laughter. So I lean in with a real serious look on my face and get right into his, his eyes. And I go, where are they? Do you know where they're located at? I don't, I don't, I don't rightly know. I, I know they're to the East, but um, the thing is, I, did you just say the East? I, I did. But the the thing is, I, 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 there's only been three of us that have seen him that 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 have seen him and lived to talk. I I, I don't. I, there's there's me, and, and and there's Reaver, and and there's that that traveling priest fella, the uh, Caleb, I think his name is. Um, you know. It, I don't know where they are. They, they, every, every, every patrol that we've sent out, every, every, every scout, every, every platoon, they, they all, they don't come back. You send full platoons and you want the four of us to go? That doesn't sound like good odds. I want you to go scout and see what you can find out. You said you've tried that and nobody's returned. This this sounds like an expensive uh, yeah, job. Yeah, but, but I, I we're have, different. But, but I we're have, different. Like, but we you can... made it through. You made it through. You did something that six other caravans before you could not. Now, I don't... You don't owe me and you don't owe this... this 
you don't know me and you don't know this keep and you don't know these people a, 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 a damn thing. I, I understand that what I'm asking you is, is suicide. And, I, and if you don't want to do it, then you don't want to do it. I, I got nobody else. I'm not saying I don't want to do it. I'm just saying this sounds like an expensive job. That's all I'm saying. And I know you said you don't pay. But if maybe everyone knows how expensive this job is in this town, and we take up the job, it just might benefit us. I mean, we could also just try and be helpful to our communities and the people around us and just assist them out of the goodness of our own heart, too. Well, we can we can do that plus get paid for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I don't want to die for nothing, you know. Can we oh. can we speak spoken with like this a true old school spoken like a true old school player? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to break the third ball. Emerald, uh, I agree, man. <laughs> we can do so, both. So, um, Emerald, when you ask, you know, can we speak? Can we speak with this Castellan? Uh, Cornelius looks up and says, maybe. I, I can't get you an audience with the Castellan, but but Reaver, Reaver, he might. Can you maybe ask Reaver for us? I don't really enjoy talking to him. I I get it. I I, I get it. I I I I'll I'll work it out. I appreciate it. Um, and with that, Dodd comes in. Uh, so you're the trail boss. Uh, well, at, the, at least the newly elected trail boss. Um, he comes in and uh, he is uh, shaking, shaking a sack. Um, uh, he's got a big old happy grin on his face. He walks up to the bar slams the sack uh and you can hear it's filled with quite a few coins slams the sack of coins down uh and says uh and says drinks for everybody on me <laughs> is that the gold for me where's everybody else's gold <laughs> so do you walk up to dad yeah I, that's what i say i'm like is this for me like where's everybody else's so Dodd says, yeah, we, uh, we, Dodd looks up and he's like, we got paid double just for making it through. Oh, well, that well I guess they, they saved a lot on those last six ones. So <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we probably should have got paid at least a sick, like six times more, but you know, so, uh, um, so he says, yeah, I can't believe it. We, we, we got paid double. Um, so, uh, so twice. Twice your share. Twice your share of what you signed on. Um, it's all right here. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just going to count it out, and we're going to take our share right now. By the way, uh, the folks at the Merchant Guild, they, you know, they made me an interesting offer. Uh, I, I'm not going to take it, but I'm just going to say, if you guys are interested in it, uh, there seem to be paying pretty well. What was the job? What was the offer? Well, it appears that this 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 keep is under attack from bandits, uh, quite a few bandits, um, almost on a daily basis from what I've heard. And they're looking for someone who can either take care of the bandits or figure out where they're hiding so that they can go take care of them. Now, these bandits, are these bandits or are these these beast men that I was just hearing about? Beast man, I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah, like a well-organized group of beasts. Maybe you have one too many. Maybe you have one too many ales already. But I don't hey, know anything no. about any beast men, but the merchants are paying top. They're paying top coin for someone who wants to be crazy enough to go up against the bandits that attacked us like three times and go figure out where they're at. I told them they could show. I told them they could shove it up their ass, and I left. I'm, I'm basically having a couple drinks, and I'm catching the first caravan the hell out of here and pretending I ain't ever seen this place before. But if you guys are interested, again, they're paying top coin. You think you're going to get out hey. without us? I'm, I am going back. 
I am going back west. I don't I don't owe you anything. We did a job. Here's your you. pay. You're done. But the last six right. wagons before us never even made it here. I mean, if you're going back, you're an easy target. And a, a sort of the smile kind of like melts off of his face. And as the realization dawns on him that you're probably correct. Um, and he sort he downs his whole drink in one gulp and says, don't care. I'm getting out of here one way or another. I, I, I ain't staying another night in this place. They can all go to hell as far as I'm concerned. Well, good luck with that then. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> Our conscience is clear. <laughs> I mean, so do we want to go check these out? Like, are I mean, you interested bandits? in yes. helping them? Beastmen? No. I mean, well, don't you think it's just, I mean, really, it's probably been a long time. He's been in here. He's dehydrated. You know, things have been stressful. Maybe he's just going overboard a little bit. And Cornelius looks up at you, Astrid, because he's sitting right at the table as you're saying this. And he says, again, I don't, I don't expect you to believe a word I'm saying, but on St. Cuthbert's eyes, I saw it myself. I come from a okay. family of adventurers. I've heard some crazy stuff that I didn't believe. I don't know. I'm just saying. Well, now I'm just kind of interested. And I mean, I was going east anyway. So why not? Right? Because so we're not going to pay out. for it yet. Let's get that. Let's get offered some look some dough. You speaking, arranged speaking of that. Paid. You arranged that. I just want to get some food. You can handle that portion. Sounds good to me. Yeah, plenty over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you can eat that all by yourself. Emerald. All by yourself, no oh. chance. There's like as you as and as LBJ says that there's there's like there's like ashes from uh, from somebody's uh, cigar that's like they they had put out on their plate and it, it's like literally you can see ashes on the side of LBJ's mouth as he's eating this sandwich that someone had stu- you know pushed their cigar out in so yeah dude you gotta be careful. <laughs> I don't remember you having a super high constitution. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know why. Like, <laughs> That's so meta. Well, that's how you improve it. I mean, you know, you subject yourself to horrible things and you either die or get stronger. Yeah. Right? Is this uh, top coin better than this double? <laughs> <laughs> that's only a double because you put two together. So, and as as you say that, uh, so Dodd has finished sort of divvying up the the piles of coin, and there are piles of coin on uh, on the um, on th- on the bar, and uh, he kind of pushes, you know, pushes a, a pushes a pile towards each of you. So you all signed on for thirty five gold. Um, this was your, you know, this was going to be your rate of pay, but um, you each have now sitting in front of you a pile of 70 gold pieces, which I'm not, so this isn't 5e, right? What I'm going to say is 70 gold pieces, you know, you're, you are, uh, you are, you are living easy, right? Like this is, uh, that is, that's an unbelievably large amount of money, probably more money, more coin than you've ever seen in your life, at least any of you, so... Wow, you guys, I I was down to no money. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, it's now 5e, all right? 70 gold pieces is this a is, lot. This is a lot of, I didn't even start with 70 gold pieces. Exactly. <laughs> Weak sauce. I'm kind of broke over here. That roll didn't go so hot for me. <laughs> My roll went real well. Sort of like LBJ's constitution. Well, 
<laughs> um. Okay. Well. So. So he shoves the coins um across to you. What do you guys want? What do you guys want to do at at this point? So let's sort of let's just recap, right? You have Cornelius who's sitting at the table, um, that you had begun this conversation with. Don is busted in, uh, and you know he's out of dodge. He does not want to be here anymore. He seems pretty resolute in the fact that he wants to leave. Um, uh, shoved a whole bunch of coins in your hand with sort of the suggestion that there's more where this came from, right? And uh, again, he's saying, you know, he has just returned from the Merchant's Guild uh, where essentially the, the caravan is arranged and this trade of goods uh, takes place. So, so, so what, time, what time of day is it that when we got here? I can't seven, remember. So you, yeah, you got, you, were, you got here like between six and seven, right around dusk. Okay. Um, at this point, we're going to call it eight or nine. Um, you know, it's been a good hour or two for you to get the horses stabled, make your way over, have some small talk, um, you know, get served and 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 whatnot. So we're going to call it somewhere, uh, you know, somewhere around eight or nine. You you know, by your sundial. So yeah, yeah. So so realistically, anything we do, we're probably doing in the morning anyway. Uh, unless you want to head out at night. I mean, you know, that's you know, you you could try anything right so like, Sh sherman uh catching the emerald was interested in the the gold as well uh i would ask emerald hey uh do you uh you think it would be advantageous to s seek out these bandits maybe take care of that problem i'd rather face bandits than beasts right now yeah that's that's my thought as well uh yeah. maybe maybe tonight here in the the tavern, maybe one of the merchants or something will come in here. That's possible. Keep keep an eye out, uh, and I'll also ask Cornelius: Do they have like an armor around here? I'm assuming it's a keep, so with their guards, they'd have to have something. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely do. You passed uh, you passed the armor on your way through. When you first come into the entryway, uh, right there to the north, you'll see a big uh, building of twenty foot tall, sort of crenellated walls open out front that is the smith and the armor uh yeah absolutely i i don't i don't rightly know that he's open right now um he tends no, no, to I'll, get I'll, ch I'll check with him in the morning but i wouldn't mind upgrading my armor if possible yeah yeah absolutely um i i, I can't necessarily vouch for the 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 array of of armor he's gonna have again we you know we're a bit we're a bit short on supplies lately um and, and so i don't know what he's got to work with but i'm sure he's got something for you it's worth checking out um but yeah no I, i'd be interested in talking to the merchants guild so um so cornelius says uh you know i, I can i can get you an audience with the merchant's guild probably easier than I could get you an audience with the castle on if that's what you wanted. Either way, my problem's taken care of. I Yeah, the merchant's guild might be a good place to start. So, um, did you, did you want to head over to the guild now? Do you think anyone's available right now to talk? I would virtually guarantee it. What if, uh, I don't know. I might stay back here and hang out. Maybe these three can go over there with you. I can get a early rest. Wait, wait, wait. So your idea was for us to go to the Merchant's Guild to arrange payment. Mm -hmm. And once he offers so lovingly to arrange for an audience, you're like, no, 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 you guys go. <laughs> And I'm gonna stay and take a nap. Uh, no, it's nine. Just... I'm I'm ready to go to to bed. Like, look, I I need to be well rested so that my arrow strikes true. Okay. This look, is look. I'm no. not the one who has an interest in even talking to them. You want to do I things for goody two shoes reasons. That it would Emeralds be nice on, on the right page. I believe LBJ's on the right page here. You're the only one who wants to do stuff for pro bono. They already outnumbered. Ex it's okay. Exactly. So you go arrange things. I don't know why I would go and arrange anything. You're good. No, cop. I'm They're going to cops. bed. I'm going to bed. You guys so figure it out. I just want to eat my stew. 
I want to get into a nice warm bed and I want to have just a long night's nice rest in a comfortable bed. So Cornelius, <laughs> Cornelius looks up and says, I'll, I'll be back here in the morning at first light. Uh, I'm sure you're going to come down for breakfast anyway. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to cause any, any, any concern within, within your little crew. So I'm going to go bed down for the night and I'll be back in the morning. And then we can, we can, we can talk about whether you want to meet with the castle on or whether you want to meet with the merchant skill. That sounds good, but we're not a crew. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> There's some things that got to get worked out first. Sorry. We're, more, Sorry. we're, pl- we're place associates. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We are we are acquaintances. We are not friends. All right. Um, yes. <clears throat> all right. And so with that, uh, with that, Cornelius um, walks up to the bar, hugs Kay, um, drops some coin onto the counter, and 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 he walks out. Uh, and more, more people are beginning to come in. Um, the folks that had left to go out into the courtyard when the gong rang, they're actually returning. <laughs> to their meals, which are gone because LBJ has <laughs> eaten them and Bertram is quickly running back and forth trying to bring people new food and just sort of glaring at LBJ um, as he does it. And uh, yeah, the, the bar is starting to fill up. Second course. So <laughs> so what do you guys think is a fair fair wage for clearing out some bandits? I mean... What are you guys thinking here? Well, maybe you see what they're willing to offer first, right? I mean, you got to go into it with an idea, a number in mind. Astrid, yeah, you haven't they, done this very much, have you? I mean, I didn't say that. I just said that, you know, I don't know that we need to be, you know, greedy about it or pushy. It's not right? greedy. The more money we get, the more equipment we can buy, and the more people we can help. So we're okay, actually well, helping the world by taking in more money. That's how this stuff works. Okay, so you think of a number, and then... Three. <laughs> 300? I like your ideas, LBJ. And Astrid, we- I'll take your share. I think we've got a pretty good baseline, at least, with what they paid for the uh, the caravan. I mean, if we can get rid of those bandits, that would ease their problems quite a bit. Right. So, I mean, I, I'd say that we have at least a, a floor to work with and then determine yes. what the ceiling is from there. I agree with you. 75 is the lowest offer I'd even consider at this point. Lowest offer you'd even consider? Well, Yeah. That's what they paid us to get them through them. That's not what they paid us to kill a bunch of them and put ourselves in danger even more so than trying to get away from them. Right? Sounds at least three times more deadly to me. Three. LBJ is a smart one. Three is a good number. I mean, if that's what you're thinking, that it's fine with it's fine for me. Awesome. Astrid agrees. She's in on 300 as well. Let's do this. So uh, in the morning, Just, who wants to talk? You sound you sound pretty slick there, Sherman. Yeah. <laughs> Sherman's not. Like, half the time he's speaking, he's slurring his words. And, like, he's only had one drink. Like, <laughs> he is not holding the, the booze down well. They don't seem to like elves here, so I'm not sure I would be the best person to negotiate with them. Just, you know. Yeah, they're not real fond of uh, they're not real fond of any non-human races out in the Wilderlands. Uh, they're, it's not a it's not a kinder, 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 gentler borderlands. Yeah. But right. isn't isn't that what makes you able to handle this problem for them? I mean, they can't just have normal people like us, some normies, doing this. I mean, I I can I can try, but I think that they would (laughs) automatically be prone to rejecting anything I have to offer, basically. 
I mean, I don't, I don't mind talking. I mean, Astrid, you, you do have a way with words sometimes. You and LBJ are great talkers. Uh, but I think, I think LBJ should sit this one out. Just remember that we are looking for coin here to help everyone else through our getting better ourselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. And remember, us getting yeah. coin helps everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and the magic number is three. I remember 100. the three. Mm -hmm. the, the ceiling, the preferably be higher, but minimum, I mean, minimum 75. And that might even, that might not do it, Astrid. Round up to 100. I mean, that's a nice even number. 100 to 300. Yeah, that's a good range. I think so. Give some wiggle room. Yeah, because that's only 25 gold each. I mean, that's not a ton. Or are we talking 100 each? I think we're talking well, this, 100 each. The, yeah, the we're 70, 100 each. Yeah, the 75 was for each of us because that's what we got paid for the caravan job. Yeah, you each true. got 35. Although you signed, to be in fairness, you signed on for 35. Yeah. We're basing it off the final results and not the initial agreement. Gotcha, gotcha. Our our values going up, you know, <laughs> with each which eat with each job that we put on our resume. Demand is with, higher, right? With 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 each death, our value goes much higher. Yeah. Let's capitalize on. I that. mean, if you you stroll through town, who else are they going to pay? I mean, they're going to pay the little farmer boy. Come on, they don't have a lot yeah. of options. The the balls are the man with two capable. hit points. <laughs> two hit points. And 70 gold. <laughs> we all just got 70 gold. We all have 70 gold. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying. We survived. The ball is in our court. We are better than the farm boys. Okay. Don't worry. I will. I can negotiate <laughs> a mutually advantageous deal. Middle of that sure. sentence when she says, I can negotiate, I say, great. And I slap my hands on it. I say, good night, guys. And I leave without paying my tab. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I love you, Sherman. All right. Um, so Sherman rushes. Sir, Sherman slaps his hand down on the table and goes. You know, he walks away upstairs to his room. And as he pulls his hand away, you see that there's no, there was no coin underneath <laughs> it. So um, he sort of left you with the tab. Although, to be honest, I don't like. I think you you were covered um, by Reaver. You you only you really only had one drink. You didn't you didn't drink yourself silly so. yeah as i say i may have had a second drink though maybe. yeah yeah and yeah. it was enough to get me a little uh woo. yeah 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 sure um all right so my seven constitution says so sherman <laughs> sherman sort of saunters off uh a little stumbly uh a little stumbly drunk um what are the rest of you doing Um, well, I've been kind of milking this drink for a while. I haven't really finished it. Um, you know, I'm getting kind of tired, so I'm probably going to go to bed. Um, I'll, I'll take out a couple gold pieces and just kind of fling them towards the center of the table and, um, say, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. So, you gotta as the that. <laughs> dude, it's all yours, all yours, man. Drink up. As the coins clink um, onto the table, Kay looks up. Uh, she hears the coins clink and looks up, looks over at the table, and says, "Cuthbert, bless you, child. Cuthbert, bless you. Have a good night." And Bertram, you know, hearing that and seeing that, runs over and grabs the coins right away, kind of like eyeing lbj as as he does it making sure that he doesn't pocket the coins before he gets there so is is this the kid yeah yeah it's the kid okay. uh and then um and then astrid uh and then astrid heads up so Leaving uh, Emerald and LBJ. What are you guys doing? Well, LBJ, I know what you're doing. You're you're sort of you're you're cleaning up food off of uh, you know half eaten food up <laughs> off of tables. Yeah. So, Did yeah, Dodd yeah. actually give me my total amount? 
Dodd, yes, uh, you got your total amount. Everyone got exactly what they were expecting. He was, he did not, um, he he didn't, he didn't hold back or, or hold out on you at all. So, okay, well, my character, he wouldn't know. As, so, at, right, at least as far as you know. What I'm saying is, it could have been triple, right? Like, he, you guys could have been paid triple. He told you you got paid double, and he did pay you double. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, first of all, I'll thank LBJ for sticking up for me and tell him I really appreciate that. And then uh, I'll order another uh, drink for myself. Yep. And then when it arrives, I'll, I'll pay for it. And I'll just sort of set it on the table and push it towards him and tell him that I'm heading up to bed. Okay. Does uh, Bertram then- come running out and grab the coin? Uh, yes, Bertram. Bertram is watching you like a hawk. He's uh, he's and he's listening and watching for the clink of coin on the table. I, mm-hmm. It appears like he seems to have given up on the fact that you're that you know you're just going to eat and drink uh, as much as you can for free. But he's definitely not letting you get his coin. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I reach in my pet purse uh, pouch and I put a coin on the table. And he kind of looks surprised, and he. He looks surprised, looks up at you, and he kind of nods and for the first time sort of breaks a smile, um, kind of, you know, acknowledges you and, and walks away. So He doesn't take it? He does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he okay. takes it and shoves it into his pocket. But, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of just you, you two sort of share a, a quick uh, a quick grin. So I yeah. take another coin out and, uh, and I intentionally drop it on the counter as he walks away. <laughs> and he looks back <laughs> and he's like, and he goes and grabs the and goes and grabs the coin. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, you guys head up, and that I think is where we're gonna break. Can we just take a quick break, Juice? Uh, I have to, you know, perform some bodily functions. I guess. Yes, I saying. was hoping oh. for that. So that sounds yeah, good. Yeah. All right, so we'll be back in about five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Have some fun in the chat, and uh, I'll jump in the chat as soon as I get back to.
All right, we're back. Bill, take it away. So you all sleep through the night um, fairly fairly uneventfully. I'm sure Sherman is uh, Sherman dreamt of you know twinkling um, gold coins in front of his eyes, uh, and Emerald you know slept with a pillow over his head so nobody would notice his ears. But you make your <laughs> way down um, into the bloody anvil, so next to the gilded anvil. Um, and and the, the place is actually pretty, it's bustling. There are folks who are running in and out, picking up uh, food and, and um, uh, you know, bringing it to different parts of the keep. There's actually deliveries that are happening. Um, the foodstuffs that you had brought in is now being distributed. And, of course, the, the Gilded Anvil gets a large portion of the foodstuffs that are there. And um, uh, the, the place is, is absolutely buzzing. Uh, and you can see as you make your way uh, as you make your way into the bloody anvil portion, you can see Cornelius is sitting down at the southern end of the bar at the very end uh, on the corner, and he's he's eating basically some soupy gruel. It looks like a very wet oatmeal, uh, and he's drinking a beer. So I'll kind of uh, saunter over there and have a seat with him. Okay. Uh, you sit down and he, um, as you go to sit down, he pulls a stool out for you, uh, you know, to sit next to him. And he waves, uh, he waves everyone, he waves everyone over. Uh, seems oddly silent, not necessarily you somewhat you can kind of sense a uh, almost a look of uh, of regret uh, on his face, like perhaps he had spoken too much, or it could be just that he's a little embarrassed about what he was actually telling you. But he does um, he does wave you over, and you know as he's shoveling gruel uh, into his face, he he looks up and and, and says, "So what what'd you decide, Castellan or or merchants?" Uh, my, I think you guys wanted to go talk to the merchants, right? I think it's best to start with the bandits and uh, own our skills against them before going after these beasts. So, um, as you, as the party is discussing this, Cornelius again looks up from his gruel, uh, and he says, "They're one and the same. You, you know that." Right, I, the merchants don't believe in the stories. Damn near any anywhere like any as close as you do. Nobody believes me. Nobody believes me. But Reaver, but you have to see it to believe it. But it's true. They're out there. And when, oh. as Cornelius says that, um, Buck, the bartender behind the behind the bar, says, "Cornelius, are you are you trying to are you trying to scare these folks with those tall tales again?" And Cornelius like kind of just shakes his head and goes back to eating his gruel. You can believe what you want. So if they're one and the same, who do you think would pay more to get them out of the way? The Castellan or the Merchant's Guild? Well, that's a bit above my pay grade. I don't, I don't, I don't rightly know. Here's what I will say. Uh, nothing comes in or out of this place without the merchants touching it. And I would say that the only ass that, that the Castellan kisses is the head of the council. So I, 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 I couldn't tell you, uh, you'd have to make that decision for yourself. And then as he says that, uh, the door opens, so the door to the south, not the door from the the bloody from the gilded anvil, but the door to the bloody anvil itself opens up, and uh, a priestly man um, who's dressed in sort of like priestly vestments. It looks to be of uh, the Church of Saint Cuthbert to you, uh, because it has sort of the the gilded hammer on it. Um, he enters, and behind him are two uh, robe gentlemen, same sort of St. Cuthbert uh, fitting, but not nearly as ornate as what he is wearing. Um, he enters, and the 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 whole, the bustling um, of the bloody anvil itself sort of stops, and everyone looks to him almost 
not necessarily in homage, but in respect, they bow to him deeply um, as he walks by. And he kind of acknowledges everyone as he walks by, um, you know, with a nod of his head. And he'll touch a hand here and there or a shoulder um, and offer sort of these a blessing under his breath. And he makes his way uh, up to the bar where Buck turns away, you know, as he was sort of taunting um, Cornelius, he turns away and looks uh, and, and says, Father, Father Han, what, what can I, what can I get you? What can I get you? What do we owe this pleasure? Um, and he looks over at all of you and Cornelius, and he says, "Well, I've, I've come to meet the heroes of Griffin's Rest. Of course, they're the talk of the town. You owe them your lives. I owe them my life. The people of Griffin's Rest owe them their lives. I've come to pay my respects." And he walks over to you and bows deeply before you and says, I am Caleb Hahn. Uh, and says, I am Caleb Hahn, traveling priest of St. Cuthbert, passing through Griffin's Rest when, uh, when I came upon the plight of these people and I am here to help as you are. So tell me, tell me, what can I do for you? So he walked up to us and bowed. He walked up to you and bowed deeply and okay. thanked you um, and and asked what he can do for you and referred okay. to you specifically as the heroes of Griffin's Rest. Okay, I know this hustle because I've done it before. So I check my pockets to make sure he didn't swipe some. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so LBJ goes, uh, he's sort of like digging um, in and around his pockets. And um, Father Han looks at LBJ sort of, confusedly um and then turns and looks to you sherman and says what 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 can i do for you do, do you do you speak for this group do you speak do you speak for the heroes of griffin's rest uh she does and i nudge her uh so astrid <laughs> let me ask you a question the the vestments that you're wearing, you're wearing sort of like this, like burnished sun on your robe. Is this, mm -hmm. is this, is this a known, like, and not to meta game here or not to reveal anything that you don't want to, but is this a known holy symbol or is this uh, something that would not be easily recognized? Um, Probably not super common. Okay. But, you know, maybe it's not like nobody else you know worships so he, the same deity so he would have a chance to know mm -hmm. or at least to recognize okay so okay so he looks from sherman to you astrid uh and immediately bows once again deeper um and says of course of course a a, a woman of the cloth I, I i i i apologize for missing that upon first glance uh and says what brings what brings you to Griffin's Rest, and how can I help you in your in your in your your holy crusade? Well, um, come come sit and uh, uh, talk with us. Um, we're we're thinking of you know helping these these poor town folk here by um, you know investigating this this bandit problem for them. I mean, it just sounds sounds terrible what they're going through it's i horrific. mean i just i couldn't imagine and you know i feel like it's our it's our moral obligation to to help these people and and to really you know do what we can um it's 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 horrific it's it's horrific and i and i understand completely the blessings of saint cuthbert be upon you i i i I, I, I myself was simply passing through and came upon the plight of these people, and and I've stayed, uh, I, I've stayed to help. I, I, I do all that I can for for these poor people, but I, I'm afraid, I'm afraid they're starving. And and the only, the only thing 
that is left is to to root out these bandits and 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 just and simply decimate them at the core. They they must be they must be sought out and they must be destroyed. The 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 wheat must be sown. This the the, the this is not the, this this shall not stand. By by the hammer of Saint Cuthbert, this shall not stand. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know how you would necessarily be able to help us, but I mean, certainly if there's, there's a way that, that you can think of that, that might be helpful for us. Um, I think we're open to opportunities. It, it appears that we are both, it appears that, that we are both holy people of action. I, I myself am, am, not unfamiliar with the ways of the hammer uh as as i as i see you are well equipped yourself uh perhaps i could join your party if you were to if you were to consider venturing out to find these bandits i I would be more than willing to join you i would would be more than willing to put my life on the line to save these people uh, as as you would i'm sure um, so Astrid kind of looks around to her, you know, new friends um, at the table and says, uh, "What do you, what do you guys think?" So you would be joining us as an act of charity, right? Not concerned with material wealth. Of, of course not. There is no, there, there, there is no. There, there is no gain in this for me other than to spread the word of St. Cuthbert and, and draw new and draw new folk into his embrace. I have no problem with you joining us then. And he looks to the rest of the party. I nod. I'm in agreement. He looks over at LBJ. <laughs> I look at Astro. You, you missing anything out of your pockets? <laughs> uh, she sort of is uh, taken aback by this this comment um, and kind of ruffles around and she says no am, am I am I supposed to be missing something I just I look at that guy sideways ah, I guess you're all right uh, and so and he says have have you eaten yet have have you eaten uh, I, I'm I'm more than willing to to, to make sure that you're properly fed. Are you equipped? No, no problem. Yep. We'll take <laughs> that for sure. And he snaps his fingers and Kay, the barmaid from last night, runs to the back. Uh, and, you know, you can hear sort of pots clanging and she's putting together food and she's yelling at Bertram and someone named Olivia, uh, you know, to, to, what are you doing? No, not that. The good cheese. The good cheese. That's at least a month and a half old. Get out the good cheese. The news just came. You can hear her screaming at them and they're sort of bustling around in the back. Um, and she comes, uh, she comes running out with a uh, spread, um, spread. It's, it's just, like three omelets on there, uh, some freshly baked bread, crusty, good, crusty, good bread, cheese. Um, the ale fills the bar, uh, and really the the rest. Uh, even though the the bloody anvil was really bustling earlier, everyone is just kind of standing around in awe, um, looking at at Caleb Hahn, this this priest of Saint Cuthbert, who is really sort of subservient to you and they're all used to sort of, you know, to being subservient to him. Um, and, uh, and, and Kay lays the food out on the table and then a small girl about 12 years old, um, kind of mousy looking long, sort of stringy, uh, greasy hair. You could tell that, uh, that she hasn't eaten in a while. You'd guess her to be like a local farm girl. Um, a little bit emaciated, kind of mousy looking, long, greasy, stringy hair with, uh, her, what, what you would, you know, what you would guess to be her little baby sister at her hand, um, looks to be about three or four years old, uh, covered face covered in dirt. And you can see sort of tear, um, marks coming down the, the dirt in her face. And she walks up to, uh, father Han and, essentially prostrates herself, drops down onto her knees and sort of kneels forward and, and says, Father, could, 
could you just, would you, would you, would you just bless Becky? Because she's, she's not been well. And she starts to tear up and cry. And uh, the priest turns and offers a blessing of St. Cuthbert to the little girl and touches her forehead and then takes the platter of food um, that Kay had just set down on the bar. And she looks, he looks to you, Astrid, and says, I know you won't, I know you won't mind and we can always get more. And he hands the platter of food to, um, to this little 12 year old girl who is, it's almost as big as she is and she can barely carry it. And she bursts out in tears um, and they go wandering off out the door. Before she wanders off, uh, so, does, does she have like a coin purse or a, a pocket or something on her? Uh, so she does, she has, it's sort of like a ragged, she has like, it's like a ragged dress. Uh, it looks, you know, it's very worn and patched. Um, it looks like it's probably been handed down, um, right. but it does have little pockets like in the front. So imagine it's kind of like, a, it's sort of like an overcoat slash dress um, okay. that has these like deep pockets in the front. So, so as she picks up the platter and gets like a little off balance, uh, I act like I'm trying to stabilize her. And I yep. slip two gold coins into her pocket. Good on you. Yeah, good on you. That's good that's, that's funny. I was going to do that. on like just set it on the tray as he's giving it to her. <laughs> that, that, that way, that way, it gives me an even number of gold. So it's just <laughs> to keep track of. There you go. <laughs> Here I am, concerned that I'm going to have to hold back LBJ as he dashes <laughs> after the food. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so um, Kay, seeing that uh, that the priest gave away really the good food, kind of lets out a little bit of a sigh, like, oh, and she <laughs> like saunters off into the back, and now you can hear her yelling, what do we have left? I just, just find something that's edible, and she comes back and then uh, she comes back out a little bit later and basically now you're left with sort of that thin gruel that uh that cornelius is eating and she sets it down and says i'm, I'm sorry it's all that's left and uh and she she offers you the the gruel in an ale so um astrid is actually pretty excited because it's still like warm so it's <laughs> all a win in her book <clears throat> Um, and so we, we may have to discuss some boundaries here when it comes to being part of the group. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Father Han looks up at you and he says, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. I haven't even introduced myself. Um, you should come back to my quarters. I have personal quarters here. Um, they've been afforded to me by the Castellan. Uh, even though I, of course, I refused, but he insisted. Um, it's it's a much better place for us to talk in my personal quarters than than it is here. Urban, I think after you know we eat something. Uh, I mean, maybe we could maybe we could go back there. See what see what's going on. You have anything a bit more solid to eat? I, he, absolutely. Um, I, I have, and he kind of leans over to you, uh, and he says, "I didn't want to say it out loud in front of all of these people, but yes, much as the Castellan has forced these private quarters upon me, he he forces, uh, shall we say, um, better." food than the rest of the folk eat. I, I simply, I, I didn't want to rub that in anyone's face. Nope, sounds good. Let's go. And I'm just going to start like making my way to the door, even though I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> okay. Okay. And um, the, the, the acolytes that had come in with, uh, with Father Han, they actually opened the door for you and um, they gesture after you. The, the, the cast, the, the acolytes have not spoken a word, um, by the way, they, they, uh, you, you know, they, they are apparently mute. Um, they, they do not speak at all, but they do hold the door open for you and gesture for you, um, you know, to, to exit. 
I will. So, uh, what about the rest of the party? Are you guys are you guys down for visiting the the priest's quarters? Um, wow, there's a lot of jokes that could be made there, but I'm not. Gonna, yeah, I had a joke in mind. Not going to make not. those. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm in. <laughs> So, I mean, so Astrid is kind of surprised um, when he says that he has better food than what everybody else does, um, basically. Um, but she does kind of follow along as, uh, you know, our Alvin friend over here seems uh, extremely excited to just, you know, head off in his direction. I mean, I don't want him to to go alone and get himself in any trouble. So I'll, I'll follow along with him. Okay. And so, uh, LBJ, are you, uh, what are you doing? Are you, uh, yeah, are you, I guess uh, I'll follow along and I'm going to pull out the tankard that I never returned from last night nice. and Good see if you. I can get that full filled up as I leave. And as you never when, finished my drink. So that's there. When, you, you. when you pull the, when you pull the tankard out, um, uh, Bertram kind of looks over. You guys make eye contact for about 15 seconds. He's like, gotcha. And he runs over to the bar and grabs a couple, three uh, half drunken drinks and pours them into your tankard and says, You're good to go, buddy. <laughs> and so I just so want to say, Paula and I used to have a friend who used to like take the cups from the bars. <laughs> Just because they had like the logo or whatever, and this is reminding me of that for some reason. Uh, yeah, that's kind of wrong on multiple levels, but uh, yeah, yeah, um, he was absolutely. a good tipper. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you guys make your way out. Um, the and you start heading sort of east up the way that you came. Where the, that set of private, you know, apartments were, um, there was there's sort of like this row of seven uh, apartments that was sort of like the Road Motel. There's a very large one um, furthest to the west that is actually a two-story. Uh, and so you enter, the acolytes open the bottom door, you enter into the bottom door, um, and you you make your way in, and this is a lavishly lavishly decorated sitting area um there's sort of a there's a like a divan there that is looks like looks to be of silk with gems inset into the wood around it there's a nicely an ornately carved writing table with an inkwell and a quill um there's uh there's rugs really really nice dyed um brightly colored rugs all over the floor um and father han says please please uh please please have a seat and he takes a seat at the the writing table um and uh offers you you know a seat on the divan and then there's sort of like an ottoman type thing that is next to it I'll go ahead and take a seat. Okay. And so um, you guys all sit down and the acolytes who had come in first come down from uh, the upstairs portion. They had run up, they come down and they have a platter of cheeses and crusty bread and, and it's a fine sort of silver uh, platter with, with all sorts of fruit, dried fruit, cheeses, um, bread and and fresh churned butter, which you haven't seen, um, you know, since childhood. Uh, he they set this all down on the table, and uh, he says, "Please, please help help yourselves." Uh, and then the acolytes begin to pour um, wine from this very so, like a like a like a vase, um, but it's it it appears to be carved of some sort of deep almost emerald green stone um and they pour, he pours this very nice sort of port wine from the 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 decanter and hands a glass to each of you i have my own <laughs> so, so he takes it and pours it in the tankard he takes this glass and makes it <laughs> So or, so all 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 nudge. Or he's gonna hold out his tankard <laughs> as they're pouring cups. 
I'll, I'll nudge Sherman and just sort of whisper to him, I think the Castellan might pay more. Yeah, I, I agree. I kind of wish we went there. Maybe maybe, so, maybe he can get us in? We haven't gone any, to anybody yet. True. And so, um, and so when everyone's glasses are filled uh, and everyone is sort of taking the, uh, and everyone is taking the, the, the sort of the cheese and the bread and you're, you're eating um, if you are, uh, mm-hmm. he says, so delicious I think, cheese. I feel, I feel <laughs> it, it is delicious cheese, isn't it? It's quite, it's quite good. Um, so uh, I, I, I believe that time is of the essence. I I, I I think that I think that we should leave as soon as possible. Are, are there arrangements that that you need to make, um, or or is is this something that we can do now? Astrid, tell him to get us in front of Castellan. We need to speak with him. Or yeah. So are you are you just saying this to Astrid? Like, I, like... I like lean into her ear and tell her, <laughs> okay. like, okay. Okay. so I'm not like interjecting between them i'm just telling her right 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 um, he may so have heard I, me but i wasn't trying you know what i mean but i yeah, want her got to it. talk about it gotcha i, gotcha. I kind of like look over at him and say oh oh yeah yeah um do you do you have a way to get us in with with who who was it again the castellan right the castellan Melchior, yeah. Melchior, Melchior, Melchior Wiseman, the, the Castellano of Griffin's Rest, yeah. This, wait, his last name is Wiseman? Yeah, Wiseman. he's actually yeah. joined us in the chat tonight. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gotcha. Easter eggs. Easter yeah. eggs, Dave. Come on. <clears throat> um, All right, it's, mean, it's later yeah. in Nova Scotia than it is where you guys are. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Do you... Um, do you do you know him by any chance? Uh, the Castellan, yes, he's uh, he's been nothing but he, he's been nothing but generous to me. Uh, he he's in fact he's 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 been my patron and quite frankly uh, more than more than helpful in terms of spreading the word of of Saint Cuthbert. So I mean, we were kind of under the impression that you know he was directly looking for some aid, and of course we want to do what's what's right um and what's good and and help these people um but but we heard he was specifically looking and and searching out for some help i mean if you already know him maybe you can you could arrange for us to have a conversation with him see what we can do you know to, to really help these people so yes yes i i i understand child you're 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 confused. I, I, I speak for. I speak for the Castellan. Oh, I, I now I understand, and I kind of nudge um, Slappy next to me, who had, you know, told okay, every me time to you ask say, about it. And... Every time you say Slappy, I hear Slappy. Like I, just, <laughs> I don't know why I, I want him to be Slappy Sherman and not Sloppy Sherman. But I, anyway, <laughs> when yeah. she nudges me. I then I'm like I don't like I don't get it, and so then I actually nudge Emeril like I'm supposed to nudge him or something, uh, <laughs> and then I'm like, I just shrug as I look at him. So I'll just turn around and nudge one of the acolytes, and then like oh wait no sorry, um, <laughs> so and the, the acolyte as you nudge him the acolyte sort of looks and then and and bows and he and he doesn't say anything but he sort of looks and bows with a questioning look uh as if did you need something so uh yeah no Better check your fun. pockets <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the oldest trick in the book right that's there a, that's there. his yeah. solution to everything whatever you do just check your pockets you know so i just so, i just say that you know we're, we're more than willing to help but um you know uh, we're going to need to improve our equipment. We're going to need, you know, to, to eventually pay for our, our stay here. So if you speak for the Castellan, um, maybe it's time we discuss um, a nominal fee for our helping. And he, uh, so he looks, 
he looks at you and then he looks over at Astrid and you can kind of see like his face is a little bit crestfallen and he says, ah, it seems that I misunderstood. So, uh, and he kind of like, you know, folds, he tenses his fingers, he folds his hands. So then we're here to talk business. It can be both. It can be both. Thanks. And so, uh, and he's, so he, he pulls out a sort of like this fine piece of vellum from a parchment scroll, uh, dips his quill into the ink pot, um, and begins writing out a list. Uh, and, um, he says, so what, what, what are your requirements then? So I just, oh. look, I just look back at the cleric because she was supposed to be the one doing this. <laughs> and yeah. if I catch her eye, I'll, I'll put up a, a five. <laughs> so um, Astrid sees the five, but she also specifically remembers that there was definitely a three in there. <laughs> and so... She looks at the five and she's confused because she thought she was supposed to ask for, you know, like three times something. But then she sees the five and she, she looks at him and she says, 35. 100 I, gold I think, total. I think we had settled on 35, you know, we felt was like a fair, accurate number. Um, that that's what we were thinking, right, guys? And she she kind of looks around to to everybody. Um, She's forgetting, you know, for something. confirmation. A zero, three hundred and fifty each. So, uh, and you you but you're saying this out loud. Oh, right? I say like, that out loud. Right, right. And then uh, I look at her like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> not not each, not each. No, 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 no. Her share goes to me. That's what we decided. <laughs> so he says 350 gold. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're, I'm assuming 350 gold for the entire party. Uh, that, that's doable. That's, that's definitely doable. That's what we got to escort the wagons. Perfect. I mean, it sounds like, I mean, we've settled on an amount, you guys. You know, we've got this all arranged. Who decided right? to let her talk? That was such <laughs> a bad idea, guys. Like, whoever did that, don't ever do that again. So Did he's 150. So, so now just, just so that we understand, you know, correctly, um, are, are you hoping that we'll, we'll completely dispel the, the bandits um, and, and send them packing? Or are you looking for information about their whereabouts? You know, what, so, are, what are your expectations? Uh, I, well, I, we are certainly looking for information. Um, and again, as I stated, I, 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 I do speak for the Castellan and, and I speak from my heart when I say that I truly want to help these people. And the only way to help these people is to find out where these despicable bandits lay their heads and to weed them out like the scum of the earth that they are. Uh, so any information that you can provide, um, certainly, certainly is, is, is of value, any scalps that you can bring back uh, would be of additional value since we're talking business. Shall we say 10 gold pieces per head? 10 gold per head? Maybe 15? <laughs> um, so he says 15 gold pieces per head can be arranged, but you'll be going alone then, right? I mean, since we're talking business, uh, there's no need for my company. Um, I, I'm I'm merely paying you to do a job. So you're saying your willingness to help out the people is wholly dependent on whether we get paid? That doesn't seem very I, priestly of you. I'm saying that it would not be in my best interests or yours 
for me to associate with mercenaries. We're more like contractors. And these are merely words. I please don't take offense. I don't judge a man for how he makes a living, but I do. <laughs> but <laughs> as the guy drinking beer off the table. But whether you want to call yourself a contractor or a mercenary or a businessman, um, you do things for pay, and 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 you're being paid to do this thing. Just sounds like you're kind of cowering out of this. No, whole I mean, okay, now. look, you guys, you guys wanted him to pay us, so I mean, now he's willing to pay us. Right. Yeah, you heard him. Castle like can't deal. talk, he so he talks for him. I mean, yeah, I but, would but it's just the like... castle that's paying us. It's not the priest. The priest is the middleman who already agreed to join us, and now he's backing out. Is he though? Maybe the priest is the puppet master. Are you guys having this conversation? Yeah. No. In front yeah. of yeah. Yeah, no. like, this, this is happening. Like, no, no, we're not. Um, I mean, my comment probably wasn't out loud. That was like a meta thing. But so, I mean, I guess I think we should take him up on his offer. I mean, it seems like that's what you guys were wanting to do. Sounds like, and a then great we idea. can, you know, we can go help out these people. So. Um, with that, he begins writing um, on this 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 paper, this vellum, this fine vellum paper with his uh, with his with his quill, uh, and he writes all of your names. And he's essentially creating a contract. Um, it, it's a beautiful sort of flowing script um, contract. And at the bottom, there's your name with an X next to it and then a line. And he, he, he hands it to you, Astrid, and says, in order for us to seal this contract, would you, uh, would you, would you kindly sign it? Um, so Astrid, really without question, um, grabs the contract and um, signs it. Okay. I go to I go to like put it my hand on her. It's like, are you sure that's right? You're supposed to make an X. <laughs> and 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 Caleb, Father Han looks over at you and says, "Well, certainly, certainly, if 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 you can't make your mark, you can just put an X." I know this lesson. <laughs> okay, so LB, LBJ Astrid has signed. LBJ makes an X. Uh, that leaves um, that leaves Emerald and when it when it gets to me, I actually want to read it. Uh, I want to okay. make sure it says what we discussed. There's no fine print, no pact with a demon, you know that kind of. So thing. so so the contract itself, um, the contract itself reads quite frankly pretty straightforward. Um, it does use some flowery language, but it does not appear. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any fine print or any gotchas. Essentially, what the contract is saying is that you have been contracted by um, Castellan, Melchior, Wiseman um, out of Griffin's Rest to find as much information as you can about the bandits that have been raiding their caravans um, throughout the, the Wilderlands. Uh, and upon doing this, um, you shall receive 35 gold upon the retrieval of any information, 35 gold per person, for the retrieval of any information that should lead to the capture and or death of said bandits. In addition, there's an addendum, sort of a PS at the bottom, that says um, any bandit head that you bring back, you will get 15 gold pieces per head. in addition to the 35 that you're getting for the information. And he looks and as you know, and so as you're perusing this and he notices you reading it and he says, since you're a businessman, I, I, I thought it would be, you know, in your interest to not only find out information, um, but to do business. 
Sounds good to me. I mean, I don't see any other way to do it. Now, these heads, do we have to bring back, like, the whole head? I mean, do you just... What do you want us to bring back as a token? An ear? Like, something? Um, so, I I would prefer the head. Um, I, I, I don't... And, and not that I'm saying that you would do this, but, uh, you know, there are two ears on each head. So, two ears. So, for I want, two ears we bring, that's kind no, of... We want, no, we want... We want the head. It's a lot of heads to carry back, probably. Yeah, good on you. If you good on you if you if you're if you're planning on taking that many heads. I mean, you want us to rid them? Uh, I want you to rid them all. Yeah. Do you have like a cart or something we can throw them in? <laughs> like. <laughs> You can, you can hold search. on, hold on. We're gonna pull a car behind us. Full oh, of, of I plan on making some bank and making up for your poor negotiation skills. You okay, how about this? 300 initially, and we ended up with 350. That's better, that's greater and, than. And he says, and he says, okay, point taken. Um, let's settle on noses for every nose that you bring back. All right. It's worth 15 gold. All right. Then we will just need a sack rather than a wagon. <laughs> and he says, of course, provisions, provisions will be provided. Um, but as businessmen, I do expect that you, that, that, that you equip your own steel, you know, yeah. your, your, your elements of doing business. As a businessman, I do expect at least 25% fronted. Uh, unfortunately that's, that's, that's not in the contract. Neither is equipping our own steel. Is it, is that no. that flowery crap in there? <laughs> there's no mention of, 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 there's no mention of any equipping in your contract. Again, the contract was pretty straightforward. Find and return any information that leads to the capture and death of the bandits that are raiding Griffin's rest and get an additional uh, 15 gold pieces per head nose at this point. Yeah. Now who's a bad negotiator? Hey, I got it down to noses rather than heads. <laughs> I got your signature. <laughs> I haven't signed it yet. <laughs> yes, you did. You said I you was signed reading it. it. The only person that has yet to sign it is Emerald. <laughs> Fine, I'll sign it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll, I'll just look it over too, like I'm pretending to read it the, the yep. same way, and then I'll like put my like super like high detailed cursive signature on it. Um, okay, and and so he looks it over, uh, puts some powder on it, uh, and then um, you know puts some powder over on it to set the ink, and then puts uh, some melted wax. So he has this candle on his writing table, um, and he pours the candle wax onto the the vellum uh, paper, and he puts the seal of the castellan, um, uh, you know, into the melted wax, folds it up, ties it up, and sets it um, up on the top of his uh, on the top of his writing table. And he looks at you all and says, um, I, I thank you so much for your time. And he bows, uh, he bows deeply once again, but has a bit of a smirk on his face. And as he bows deeply, he is looking directly at you, Astrid. And um, he says, it has been a pleasure to meet the heroes of Griffin's Rest. And then turns curtly on his heel and goes up the stairs um, to his drawing room and essentially leaves you downstairs alone with the two acolytes. Who are just, who are not, who are not really inter interacting with you, but um, they're, they don't seem to be pushing you out either. Um, I pick up a, a small chunk of cheese off the tray and uh, throw it at LBJ and I say, <laughs> you ready to get out of here? Uh, go, go track down some bandits? Yeah. Um, where did he put his mark when he, did he put it, where did he, did he pocket it? Did he leave it on the... Table no, it's on he, everything. Yeah, everything is on the table. So, 
So as uh, I, the, con the contract is on the table, the mark is on the table, the candle is on the table, everything is on the table. So I will eat the cheese and get up and make my way around the table towards the mark as I'm eating food and eating whatever is left. Okay. And take a quick look at the acolytes to see if they're watching me. So the acol um, the acolytes are. You know the acolytes are there they again they don't necessarily seem to be interacting with you it's hard they also don't seem to be interacting with each other again like they're practically mute um they just sort of seem to be politely waiting for you to do something whether that be leave or you know if you want to finish your meal or they seem to be there just as servants so i guess what i'm saying is you could try to pocket this bad boy right but you're gonna have to roll for it I will sit in the, his chair because he has left. Yes, he has. And eat yep. some more food and watch them. And as okay. soon as I get a chance, I will try to pocket that uh, mark. Okay. I I, I I need a thief skill check, though. Yeah. That's fine. yeah. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, pick, uh, let's see, what would it be? You have to roll I'm guessing dice. like 20% or something. Yeah, yeah. First, <laughs> first level thief skills. Good luck. Yeah, first level thief skills are not really um, all that great, but like, it's a good thing. But you know what? Fast. He's got confidence, and sometimes that makes all the difference. That's right. Yeah, I agree. He believes in himself, and we believe in you. <laughs> we believe I in don't. your ability to. We believe in your ability to steal stuff. <laughs> I don't, LBJ. Don't worry. Just, I'm not placing that false confidence in you. Okay. We just I, hope we don't get in trouble. I would say, I guess it would be pickpocket. Pick that's going to be that's going to be pickpocket. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Big money. Okay. Big money. Seventy nine is not big money. <laughs> so you that's go. Big, big um, fail. <laughs> you you go to grab. Uh, you go to grab the 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 seal, and your hand hits like you you accidentally hit the candle, and the candle like the wax spills onto your hand, and you're like, ah. Oh! And the both acolytes look over um, as you're standing there with sort of melted wax on your hand and the seal in your in your hand, and they they're looking at you. So I'll just say, don't just stand there. Go get something to help heal them. You need bandages. Go go go. And so uh, one of them runs off upstairs, and the other one is standing there with just like his eyes on you at this point. He's staring at you. I did what I could for you. Mm. You got Let anything to get this wax off? Uh, and so <laughs> the acolyte, um, the acolyte just does this like to you, um, and you hear coming down the stairs. You can actually hear two sets of footsteps coming down the stairs. Um, you see the other acolyte first, and you see um, Father Han very closely uh, behind him. Okay. I think I think he had he, his he he hurt his hand. He's kind of clumsy. So Father Han, uh, Father Han rushes over, uh, and he takes the seal from your hand and says, "Oh, I, uh, oh, I see. I, I'll be." I'll be taking that. Let me just get that out of the way. Clearly, um, clearly you you tripped over that. Um, the candle wax doesn't look that bad. Uh, here, allow my servant to to take care of that for you. And the servant does come and sort of gingerly and nicely, he's removing the candle wax from your hand, and he puts sort of a cold compress um, on your hand. Father Han ta has takes the seal and slides it into his pocket, and he looks at you, LBJ, uh, and he says. It's unfortunate how accidents happen. And then again, he turns and on his heel and begins to go up the stairs. Come on, let's get out of here. Before you guys get us into more trouble. <laughs> he could have burned our contract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now who's good at negotiating? Me? I still got more out of that than you. So what are we thinking, guys? Like, do you guys want to go get some supplies? Do you need anything before we leave? I I'd mean, like to. I like to see what the armor has for armor. I'd like to, if I can upgrade from chainmail, that would be great. 
you know what? I'll come with you because I I wouldn't be opposed to to checking out some things myself. It sounds good. We we were told where the armorer was, so we'll go make our way to that yeah. crun crenellated building. Let's head in that direction. So you guys uh you guys head out from the apartments. The the armorer is just across the yard, sort of um kitty corner and as you're making your way over to the armor this loud clanging gong sound starts going off and you recognize it as the sound that was going off when you first arrived and it's 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 everywhere and folks start rushing 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 from everywhere that they are over to the the courtyard um and you can hear yelling and screaming from the 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 front gate uh they're um, open the gate, drop the gate, drop the gate. And uh, you can hear sort of the clinking chain um, that you heard when you arrived in the portcullis coming up. And uh, as the the portcullis um, comes up, you, you know, you're walking over to where the armor is, which is right in sort of that entryway. And you can see um, three men at arms, three guards are actually bringing Dodd uh, into the, the, courtyard area into the entry yard um he, apparently he must have left last night and uh he is missing a leg uh so his left leg is completely missing he looks uh he's bleeding out almost um completely uh completely white he has several arrows stuck into his chest um and he he, he doesn't look to be uh he he doesn't he doesn't he certainly doesn't look well and d definitely doesn't look um like he's going to make it uh, i hate to say i hate to say i told you so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, sorry go ahead i was to say astrid will run over um to where he's being brought in um and just kind of say a prayer near him um you know, for for a few moments before she kind of moves back over to where her friends are. So, um, as you you run up to say a prayer, um, Dodd comes out of sort of the malaise um, that he was in, and he opens up his eyes, and he looks at you, uh, and he says, "Astrid, I, I don't." It's not men. And he sort of spits up this blood and dies. And the the, the men at arms um, look at each other and they say, that's where we're going to end this week. It's a weird thing for them to say. Great. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, so that was... Uh, episode one uh we'll be back in two weeks uh not next week but the following week i believe um yeah and then uh yeah i don't know i can't think off the top of my head anymore it, it caught me off guard i wasn't expecting it to end there <laughs> well I thought, I thought you wanted to end at uh anyway you're yeah, yeah no you're perfect you're yeah perfect. no i think it's fine you're at 11 30 like yeah, so, yeah yeah no you're good you're yeah. good hey okay right. i was like we'll Whoa. have to wait two weeks before i can pick his pockets <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> so uh so anyways uh i guess we can just go around the the table if anyone wants to promote anything uh here on master the game we have um mini painting tomorrow and thursday uh, in a couple weeks on Thursday, we're going to have Pulp Cthulhu on the channel, uh, run by uh, B.N. Drake, Peter here. Uh, Friday, we have our Session Zero for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, uh, Follow Plague Stone. Uh, so we're going to create characters, figure out how the group knows each other, and uh, set some ground rules going into it, set, you know, set some expectations. And then Saturday, we have uh, our Descent into Avernus game. So uh, we play that with Nate from WSD20, Jake Mini, Mini Terrain Domain, uh, Paula, and then Luke from the DM Lair. So, uh, and that, we're, we're pretty far into that one. We're, um, we're just getting out of Baldur's Gate. So, and by uh, far into time. it, he means it's an excessive amount of episodes <laughs> in which nothing has moved forward. Yeah. <laughs> chapter one, we've been playing for over a year once a month. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're yeah. we're just we just cruise through it clearly you know it we're taking our sweet time uh so yeah i think that's about it uh bill you want to promote anything or whatever uh yeah so not this tuesday but the tuesday after this one i'll be playing um session two of back me b2 <laughs> keep on the borderlands <laughs> true <laughs> Uh, how about you, Paula? Any last words? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't really have anything. Um, I mean, I'm painting miniatures. I don't even know what I'm painting. Um, did I finish the last thing I was painting? Nobody knows. No, you knows. started the 3D printed one that was. We'll sent find to us. out when it's I sit down <laughs> and he turns the camera on and I figure out what I was painting. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was painting that like creature thing with the eyes. Yes. I don't remember Everywhere. what it's called. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. And I'll be in the Pathfinder game and I'll be in the um, Descent game and should be fun. It That's will stuff. be. Cool. Uh, how about you, Draven? Anything coming up that you want to promote? Um, I guess nothing personally. Um, I have some like more Pathfinder Starfinder videos that I'm going to be kind of working on the next few weeks. Uh, but I mean, I'll see everyone in two weeks for the session two of the, the Beckney game, Keep on the Borderlands. And unless any something's changed, I believe I'm still part of the Pathfinder 2E game. 100%. So, I, do you have an idea what you're going to play? Uh, I guess it depends on what everyone else. Like, I, I'm so used to being a permanent DM that I look at like what role I can possibly fill. Gotcha. Um, I'd love to make a ranger. Um, okay. but if, or either a ranger or a cleric, those are the two ones that I'm kind of looking at. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we have so far, I know we're going to have a goblin alchemist, a goblin rogue. Uh, and then I don't think Paul has decided yet. So, um, we'll yeah, see. I'll decide when I also sit down and he <laughs> turns on that video <laughs> and I wing that. <laughs> That's how I like to live my life. <laughs> Pretty much. That's all the rolls. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how about you, Peter? Got anything you want to promote or plug? That uh, that what? tyranny video or whatever. Uh, what is it, what's it called? Ah, uh, uh, you have two tales of, of them now. demise. Yeah, yeah. I did a new tales of demise, uh, chapter two, hell. I answer the question: <laughs> Can you die from a grapple check? <laughs> so go check that out. Uh, all the links to their channels are below. Um, with that, I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful night. Game on. <laughs>